been a long week. <laughs> Episode 35. Somebody happened to get caught up. Caught up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess the end. Well, it's not even the end of that saga. Because <laughs> he still got to get sentenced. And, yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure y'all know what we talking about. He gonna about. get a slap on his ass. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you probably like that, huh? Uh. <laughs> Obviously, we talking about meaning he's not gonna. Get, I don't think he's gonna do it anytime. Probably not. He gonna get uh, probation. Probably have to pay a fine for using up the uh, police officer's time and resources. Well, before we get into it, let's first and you know, Juicy Smollett convicted of staging attack, <laughs> lying to police. <laughs> Former Empire actor Juicy Smollett was convicted Thursday on charges he staged an uh, anti-gay racist attack on himself. Maybe three years ago, and then lied to Chicago police about it. I, I thought it wasn't just about that. I thought it was about racism too. Which mean? He said it right there. Oh, racism. Well, I didn't hear you said that. Uh, well, we we knew. Everybody already knew. He was lying. <laughs> the cases were brought against him. They randomly dropped after a phone call from his boy, Mr. Barack Obama. Uh, and then somebody said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, <laughs> we ain't letting him get away with this." Brought the charges back on him, and he was got sentenced. him in court. And it was obvious what was going to happen. I'm surprised that he even went to court. Yeah. He had the audacity. To go up there, he's still saying, I'm innocent. It's like. You know, had his glasses on. <laughs> yeah. Like Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with baby hair. I, it goes back to Dave Chappelle's comedy uh, show. Where, you know, he, the infamous Just for Juicy. and Juicy. Juicy Smollett. The Frenchman. <laughs> the Frenchman. <laughs> the Frenchman. So not only no, was he gay he's and Jewish, black, actually. Yeah, he's actually Jewish. His father's Caucasian. Might but, be a French Jew. Wait, is his father Caucasian or some Eastern European? His I mean, father's is he Jewish? Jewish. Is he Jewish or some Eastern European? No, he's Jewish. Well, he could be Jewish and Eastern European. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, so he was able to try and stage his attack. I saw somebody say the reason why he even thought he can get away with this is because his father's white. Because <laughs> his father's a Jew. He just thought... I. You know, there's a certain people that do these type of things all the time, you know. Sorry. <laughs> you got a little bit of uh, black in you. Yeah, you see here. You got black blood in you. Juicy Smollett, guilty verdict. Uh, 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 verdict latest in polarizing case. Is that case. his mama? Uh, I don't know who those people is. I don't, that's his sister, and that's his other brother, so I'm guessing that is his mother sitting next to him. Why is Pops not? Is Pops passed away or something? Or he's just not there? You see, Smollett conviction Thursday for lying to police about racist homophobic attack came nearly three years after the report of a horrifying hate crime quickly became part of a polarizing, polarized political landscape with people, including the President of the United States, weighing in from all over. I remember when he first said this, and even Trump was like, oh, like, <laughs> Trump didn't even want no smoke with it. He was like, please tell me, didn't no idiot walk around with a MAGA hat and attack this dude. You, you got to be kidding me. But he came out with a soft shoe and, you know, response like this is a situation. We're going to try and uh, see what's going on make sure the investigators know exactly what happened. And black people were just, you know. Joe Budden just flat out said nigga lying. Yeah, Joe Budden said, show me film and I'll I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't just Joe Budden. All of social media, people were just like, I don't just, know, man. Like, it's South too, Side of Chicago at 2 in the morning. Listen. Only at minus thing, 16 degrees. You're only outside for two, well, three things. At two o'clock in the morning, you're going mm-hmm. to work, getting off work, or you're looking for ass. <laughs> that's the only. Oh, that's how I say you up the mischief. We'll say it like that because yeah. it ain't always sex. It could be violence as well. But like oh that. yeah, well, you're trying season. to rob somebody too. It's Christmas so time. Four things. It's Christmas time. It's robbing season. But most people are out for number three. Yeah, or <laughs> one of number three. We say three can all be in combining one. But yeah, people were obviously looking at this case like this don't make sense. Subway. At two in the morning in Southside Chicago. Well, Subway's not open at. I don't know. Maybe it's twenty four. Well, over here, there. maybe maybe pre COVID it was open. I don't know. I've never seen Subway open past ten o'clock. I don't know. A prosecutor said a verdict was a resounding message by the jury that Mr. Smollett <laughs> did Benjamin. exactly did exactly what we said he did. Recruit two brothers to fake an attack so it could be robbed, recorded by a surveillance camera and posted on social media for publicity. The brothers testified that the former Empire actor paid them thirty five hundred for the hoax and gave them lines to yell, including about MAGA country, apparently referenced to President Donald Trump's "Make America Great Again" slogan. Now that thirty five hundred won't shit. It definitely, but they're Nigerian, so they can flip it. 
when somebody made a point. I saw, I saw a white person say, yeah, it was a white person. They said, <laughs> Juicy Smollett, just, this is, how do you say his name? His actual name is Jesse. Jesse Smollett. Smollett. But, you know, I'm so used to him, <laughs> Juicy. Jesse Smollett, they said he's the first American to scam a Nigerian. <laughs> Them niggas don't get scared. But he, when um people said he was frustrated getting on the, he let himself be a um, witness in his own case. It was like, what are you doing? He got frustrated with the prosecutor, and he went up there, and he tried to flip on people. He tried to flip on Don Lemon. He tried to flip on the Nigerian dudes. Oh, he was up there acting. When you, yeah. Being a thespian. He, he was, he was, this is his uh, his crowning moment. Practicing of his, his craft, because he's got a big role coming up. Yeah, I don't think you got shit coming up. <laughs> the report made headlines around the world and prompted a massive manhunt in Chicago with roughly two dozen police joining the investigation. It also drew criticism from Trump, who called the police department handling of the case an absolute embarrassment to our country. Not only did Mr. Smollett lie to the police and, we, and wreak havoc here in the city for weeks on then for no reason whatsoever, but he then uh, compounded the problem by lying under oath to a jury. Smollett was a black and gay maintained, he was biracial and gay, they need to make sure they say that. Maintained throughout the year, nearly three year legal battle that he was attacked in the downtown Chicago, uh, January 29th. We know all that. So, obviously, the case made no sense. People was already <laughs> dismissing this, like, man, this don't make no sense. It's too much. No, the part, this is why, this is how you know he's he's an actor because he overact, he overdid it. Okay, two Caucasians in the south side of Chicago who know who you are, and you. Why would they know who you are, number one? Well, you on first Empire. Of all, let's let's go back to the two Caucasian in Southside Chicago, <laughs> well, when I, Chicago's supposed to be the worst place where people get shot all the time. I let, it's just so bad. Niggas is so terrible. Well, you can walk around at two o'clock in the morning. And get you sandwiches. think white people would be scared to go to that part of town? Allegedly, <laughs> but according to Mr. Just, Smollett, they was hanging out in that area. Because and they just they were they look to. were they looking for you, or they just so happen to see you? They were like. Oh, uh, that's that Jesse guy off of Empire, <laughs> the the nigger. Let, oh, and we just so happen to have a bottle of Clorox on us, <laughs> and we just so happen have to have a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's string him up. Let's just put a rope around his neck. Let's not actually try to hang him. Just put it around his neck and throw some Clorox on him. Hang send him. A, <laughs> let's send him a message. Like it, it just was stupid. He just yeah. He he didn't think. If he was thinking. He was thinking of Tyler Perry when he did this shit. <laughs> Doing too much. Doing too fucking much. Just extending the scene way too long. In the bedroom, being the bedroom scene for uh the show is only 30 minutes, but the bedroom scene is 20 minutes into the show. And you like, okay, <laughs> when we gonna get to the diner? When we gonna get to the You know, you in the apartment for 28 minutes out of the 30 minutes. Tyler Perry wrote this uh sketch for Juicy. <laughs> this Probably. is a Tyler Perry film that's all over this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see here, uh, you see they, they, you know, Fox News they read definitely. Oh, they was they 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 scored two. Ridding House won his bow, case. Bow. They got two back. Bang to bang bang <laughs> like Kevin uh, Kevin yep. Hart. <laughs> we have. They was ready for this boy. And what's crazy is if you think about it, this case was not. This case is not worth reporting considering the Ghislaine Maxwell case is happening right now. He's a way bigger fish. Like I, I remember hearing people say that you know the Cal Rittenhouse case. This is. This is a uh this case shouldn't be national attention. This I get why he got national attention because he's a celebrity. I'm talk about it why it I I believe it should have uh, national attention. But uh maybe it's gonna relate thought. something else. Sorry. Um oh um this right here I get why I got national attention because you know he's a celebrity and he made it a, a bigger story. He made it he a lied. story. Yeah, he lied. He made it uh he made it a story. So, and he tied it to Trump on purpose. He made it this big deal. So, I get why they, if you're going to make it a big deal at the beginning, you got to make it a big deal at the end. Because if he would have been found innocent and they proved that somebody did something to him, people, they would have had to talk about it then too. So, exactly. I get it. So, I get it though. But they, uh, Fox News definitely was licking their chops. <laughs> yep. They got Riddling, uh, Riddling House. They got Mr. Smollett sticking down. They like, man, this has been a good month. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that was something else I want to say in here. We're just going uh, He said, yeah, he said, uh, after a uh, contentious week of witness testimony, counsel arguments, and deliberation, the jury found Smollett guilty on the first on the first five counts, and he was acquitted on the sixth count of lying to detect the weeks after Smollett was, said he was attacked. Smollett was a stoic, and the jury read a verdict. The actor sat straight up and stared straight ahead without showing any outward emotion. 
Judge Lynn said uh, he will order a pre-sentencing investigation and attorney will meet via conference call to determine the date of pre-sentencing motions. The 30-year-old Empire alum was charged with six counts of disorderly conduct related to false doc, uh, statements to Chicago police officers about a 2019 hate crime. We know all that. He was found guilty in telling police officers that uh, he was a hate crime victim. Uh, count one accused him of responding. Crow, yeah, we know all this. I'm trying to find a particular part. Uh, uh, the prosecutor added, and by the way, a fake crime that denigrates uh, what a real hate crime is, and to those, uh, and to use those meanings and symbols that are so uh, abhorrent in our society, is clear why the police would take it seriously, and they did. Now, before we go go into this, we're gonna go back in time for a second. Let's let's travel back in time for a second. Now, this was a uh, BET wrote this article where they allowed the article by a person named Austin Williams. This is January 31st, 2019. Now, you see what the headline is? Where straight blacks. Now, that word blacks, I only see white people, people say <laughs> black. You know, the black guy. They say it with such vitriol. It's this like black. Disgusting. Like, when throw we say up. white, we say white ass or white. White motherfucker. Black, black. We say it very, you know, like, very, <laughs> get your white ass out of here. They say Black. Get your black. <laughs> well, get your black ass out of here. Right, but look, where straight blacks <laughs> and white gays fail Juicy Smollett. Nine queer, uh, non black queer folks and non queer black folks have left people like Smollett abandoned and endangered. He was lying. Even, even the even the whites, they were like, he's lying. We can't defend him. It, it was it's pretty obvious. He said uh, we can't have egg on our face coming back to our community. <laughs> now this right here was another article. This is Vibe Magazine. They deleted the article. Yeah. He now, the, the tweet's still up. For it. <laughs> I went looking for it. Straight black men's silence on Juicy Smollett's homophobic and racist attack mm-hmm. is dangerous. Niggas won't silent. <laughs> they were very vocal about how they felt about what was going on with uh, Mr. Smollett. Look at this. Uh, East Texas ADOS. So, Juicy tells a lie, and we're supposed to assist <laughs> with a crime? Make it make sense. <laughs> <laughs> This is a straight lie. Please provide the scientific data that proves straight black men were quiet on the issue as compared to they other segments of society. They said this was a straight black lie. <laughs> now, all most of this was in uh, 2019, obviously, but yeah. a couple, couple people, you know, double back now. Oh yeah, Vibe Magazine got the memo. I saw a <laughs> dozen straight black male celebrities share their story. Yeah, they, most of this is 2019, but a few people double back to say, you know, do some gotcha, like the first comment. Yeah, but they deleted the article. So they got in order this, so now it didn't happen. And they ne- what they said never happened. So now there's the tweet still up. So I'm surprised they didn't delete this yet. They love attacking black men, if particularly this, heterosexual black men. Yeah, if this goes up to about a couple more thousand people attacking, they're gonna delete this too. <laughs> Yo, stand on your stand on your square. Keep your article up, like the root black man or the white people, black white people, people uh, black people. Stand on your square. <laughs> Damn, what's wrong with y'all? But uh, some crazy. This is why I was saying I don't know why he got on the stand. He knew he was lying, but he got on the stand and started saying he just he just started saying anything. He just started telling everything. The devil put him as a what? Is that a is that a, a pathological liar? I don't know, but Juicy Smollett testifies he did drugs and masturbated with his attacker. So now the dude said he ain't gay. So was this his way of? smearing the dude because let's be honest if you want to be honest the brothers kind of gave him up early yeah they they kind of turned them early they got their bag the tunes the cops started putting pressure on them they say look man he hired us to do this <laughs> also another thing that they said in his trial juicy said the reason why he was out that night was because one of them part of his uh regime as a training regime told him he needed eggs so he was going out to get eggs now I thought you was out to get Subway. <laughs> now you you're out getting eggs. This is totally off subject, but when you say eggs, we have a uh, we have a cousin, and every time he gets his girlfriend pregnant, oh yeah, he's been eating egg. them eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, his wife now. His wife. That's his wife. Uh, my apologies. She may be listening. Yeah, his shout wife. Out. Shout out. <laughs> but yeah, this, <laughs> it, this this he just got on the stand and just started telling stuff. This is my I ain't even got to read what he said, obviously. Another thing that happened. 
And this almost got some other people in trouble. Juicy Smollett testifies to receiving text. Uh, oh, thank you. Text from CNN's Don Lemon during Chicago police attack investigation. Now, how this story ties in. They have in, the text messages that were sent? Uh, apparently, the text messages told him that Chicago don't believe his story. The police department don't believe your story. He was giving him a heads up. They don't believe you. Okay. But he's a journalist. Oh, yeah, he's a journalist. He has to be. Uh, so when he said, so I mean, he got information because he was trying to tell the story to the media, to the uh, audience, but he took the information he got from them and gave it to Juicy or just Jesse. How do you say his name? You, you, yeah, do that. he can't do that. But that ties into his former co host or co worker, Mr. Kumo, Chris Com- Kumo. Kumo. I don't know, whatever. Kumo. Kumo. Well, Kumo. he got fired. He recently got fired because he was sending text messages and getting damn information on his on his brother's accusers. Yeah. <laughs> so Juicy got and he started letting it ring on him. He just, he started telling everything. Juicy like, if I'm going, he like Nino Brown in New Jack City. If I'm going down, I'm taking everybody down with me. This is bigger than me, baby. <laughs> this is bigger than Nino Brown. But <laughs> the crazy part is. I still believe <clears throat> the reason why he pulled off this hope was to get that bill passed for uh, the hate bill, the hate crime bill he had passed. I think it's, that hate crime bill was for uh, the quote unquote LGBT. Yeah. The LGBT hate, time, hate crime bill is why they had him set this up. Yep. Because the second this happened, every politic, they think about how fast they got that bill through. Yep. It had to be already written. Just like they had the. Hiring actors to pretend like black people are beating up fucking Asians so they can get that anti-Asian bill. <laughs> yeah, uh, Yang, Andrew Yang got caught up with that. The same dude that was allegedly did something in the mall is the same dude that he uh, confronted on a on a uh, uh, what they call those things go from island to island. Trolley? It's not trolley. It's a uh, uh, it's a ferry. Ferry, yeah. On the ferry, he confronted a black dude who apparently was harassing a person, and he confronted him like he was just some Superman or something. And niggas didn't fall for it. He ended up coming in fourth as a mayor. How you lose a mayor and you ran for anyway? They always use black people or black people's pain and suffering to yep. get something passed. The same way they use this, they use they use this to get that bill passed. The same way they use, like you said, the uh, fake attacks to get that agent bill passed. But I want to show another person's perspective on this case. We remember when Amanda Seal got on television and said, even if he did lie, it was honorable. <laughs> that bit, Emma Steele is fucking, <laughs> could even get back she, shit crazy. She said, even if he did lie. This is the same woman that accused a black man of sexual assault. And then never said sorry. And never said an apology. Never apologized, nothing. Just went fucking on. Fucking crazy. She came, she came out and said, you know, even if he did lie, it was honorable. Well, Mark Lamont Hill, yes. Ooh. Mark Lamont Hill. He got back on here and made comments. <laughs> oh no, let let him hear the comments first. This is why I said earlier I felt like even though the case may have not been have gotten the national attention that it did, it also can tie in and bring up something else that's been going on in the news, meaning how black black men in particular or men in general who have been accused of rape crime falsely. Or other crimes. Or other me. crimes. Why can't why can't the people that accuse these people of false crimes also be put on trial when they're lying? There have mm-hmm. been cases where women are flat out lying, have confessed that they lied, and nothing happened to them. And we won't get to that. Aren't they using up the police officers' re- uh, resources too, going out looking for these men who yeah. they are? We accusing? just saw that story with Sibo. Exactly. Well, she says she was actually. Uh, Sexually assaulted, but we don't know. Shit. She was sexually assaulted. All right, so let me show y'all what Mark had to say. Good evening, and thank you for joining me on Black News Tonight. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. Tonight, we start with breaking news as jurors hand down a guilty verdict in the case against Empire star Jesse Smollett. The 39-year-old actor was found guilty of five of the six felony counts of disorderly conduct that he faced for lying to the police about the anti-gay and racist attack in downtown Chicago back in 2019. Joining us now from Chicago to provide further insight on the guilty verdict and more is BNC correspondent Derek Lewis. Derek, good to see you. Welcome to the show. First of all, can you help us 
understand. Can you please break down? Now you notice I I find it funny how they keep saying anti gay and then racism. Yeah, they're saying the race. Didn't your race be over? Didn't race be first? Which means the whole agenda that whole time was just for them to get that, uh, like you said, yeah, that anti gay bill <laughs> spit past. Out of all the allegedly he had Clorox. This is all fake, I know, but they say he had Clorox thrown on him, a noose put on his neck. He was called the N word, but he was also called the F word. So that's, that's equal. Can you say? It? I, I can say it. I, I'm just being. We just. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making this. I'm making the decision not to say it, but. The fact that all the stuff that happened against him, most of it was because, according to his own fake story, most of it happened because he was black. <laughs> but they still made it about being gay. Black, white. Well, yeah, biracial. Jesse Smollett has been convicted. They say he lied to police, that he staged a hate crime, and now the jury convicted him of it. I wasn't there. So... I can't say with any certainty what happened. What I can say is that there was reason to have doubt. There were curiosities in the case. There were question marks uh, that needed to be addressed. The difference between me and many people, though, I'll be honest with you, is I just don't trust the police. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where Hold, was on. Your Hold on. So he's saying the reason why he still holds some doubt in favor of Smollett, it's because he don't trust police that much. You a defund the police, Negro? So you trust... <laughs> you don't need the police to know what the hell happened in this case. You can have fucking common sense. I don't believe what police say. And so I don't assume that because the police say Jesse Smollett lied <laughs> that he didn't tell the truth. I don't assume that because the state says that he's guilty that he is guilty. Uh, again, there are questions that I would love to ask Jesse Smollett, and hopefully we can get him on the show soon so that we can get... Damn, you itching. Go ahead. Where was all this uh, compassion and understand for Mr. Bill Cosby? Where was this? You, <laughs> did, you, you don't trust the police, but you trust everything that came out of those, <laughs> those women's mouths that accused him of sexual assault. And all that shit. Where was this energy? The man was released. And you, still and, you and you you guys have done segments on him s since then. Matter of fact, recently, probably like a what, three or four Didn't weeks ago? Didn't somebody come out and say he, uh, who was that? It came out and accused him? Where was this for Mr. Bill Cosby? Because women say that he sexually assaulted I guess that would be his argument. It wasn't police. It was women that said it. What's the difference between the two? What you mean? What's the difference? They're people. Well, he said he don't trust the police because they're he believes. I, I don't I don't trust everything that women say either. That's an argument. <laughs> he obviously disagrees. He's sitting here saying that he doesn't believe them because the police the police were they actually took his case seriously and went out and tried to, you know, find out what was going on. That's why they pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> they like we could have been using these resources for other things. It became a high profile case because he added in the MAGA thing. That's what, and then he, obviously he was on a television show. That's what made it high profile. Like the police were told, if you don't find who did this, you're going to be considered complicit in the racism. And that's what I don't understand. I, I'm not talking about the like, if if people falsely accuse somebody of a crime, and you know that they are lying, like how they did uh, Juicy, they need to take their ass to court, find them. Do probation, uh, community service. If, I think it's, a, already do, if it's a serious crime, huh? I think they do do uh, community service. Community service. If stuff. it's a serious crime where somebody has served sixteen to twenty years to thirty years, that half their life has been taken over, then you have to go do some jail time, five ten years max. Get the answer to those questions, but until then, I'm still going to reserve my judgment. I respect the process. I respect uh, the deliberation that went on, but. I still have considerable questions about what's going on in that case. And I'll tell you something. I've known Jesse Smollett uh, for a long time, and he's someone who has fought for justice. He is someone who has advocated for the vulnerable. And so, yeah, I was inclined and am inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt. But again, until I hear from him, I'm still 
going to raise some questions and not presume that everything that happened in that court, that everything that the prosecution said, that everything that the state and the police said was accurate or true, because I just don't know. Anyway, but, we'll find. But you believe everything those women were saying, but you weren't there. Wasn't there. He wasn't there with men when Mr. Bill Cosby had those women. You weren't there, but yet you're so, you can throw him under the bus. We know why you uh, defending Mr. Lucy Smollett. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lamar, I hope you put it. I hope you're not throwing allegations on. I'm not throwing ag No, I'm not throwing those allegations on him. He's down with, the, with the crew. But go along, the get go him. along, fucking get along game. <laughs> oh, well, he got to go along, get along fucking boule. One got kicked out because he didn't urge to fire Don Lemon <laughs> over claim he tipped off Ju uh, Juicy Smollett. Anchor remains mum on whether he texts former Empire star that cops doubted the hate crime tale. But I'm not even gonna say nothing. And this is the one you show. <laughs> yeah. Don Lemon brings pal smoke at a life. <laughs> Don <laughs> said, fuck that. You ain't taking me down with you. Don bro. said, I need my money. <laughs> Don Lemon brings his pal Juicy Smoke at a liar. Uh, hours after the anchor was convicted of staging a uh, hate crime against himself on Thursday, but CNN host still failed to address his own role in the man made for TV drama. Don Lemon says, I like white milk. I don't want any, uh, a little bit of chocolate dropped in it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, uh, what do you call it? I want He's like, pure. I like pure. I don't like mixed. <laughs> and he mixed. Well, when he looked up his uh, ancestry, it said that his, he had a great grand, a grandmother or something that passed. Well, or something he like may that. have some li that in his lineage, but he's not a, like a half half. He's, he's like one of those, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Juicy is fucking, uh, that's a white man. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, another part of this that happened is Chris Kumo, who was also fired from CNN after, you know, the, some new data, some new information came out about his ties to what his, uh, what he did to his brother's accusers. Hey, let me tell you, he had his brother back. Well, no one, wicked as hell. No one's denying that fact. The part is, I still got to fire you. It may be wicked. His brother may be, oh, it ain't no maybe. Him and his brother That's are wicked. To. This, ain't it amazing? How it came out that over was it fifteen thousand, ten thousand elder people in New York <laughs> died people. because yeah. they were put in the same uh, buildings as sick older people. Yeah. It was almost like they was they made it a death camp. <laughs> was they were literally trying to for kill grandma those and grandpa, off. aunties. They, they trying to they trying to get rid of social security. <laughs> they trying to get all those checks out of the way so that we could have money in the comedy. So, so they, that news comes out. The comment. The comment. Economy, <laughs> he's struggling. <laughs> but that news came out, and right after that, Letitia James, the the woman who was going to run for governor, but now she's not running for governor. They told her I'm run for governor. Yeah, he got. She came out and said, "Oh no, this man, all these sexual assault cases." And then it's like, "Oh, we gotta get rid of him now." And well, they got rid of him for that rather than the ridiculously the worst the deaths. The deaths. <laughs> they just let that ride. Well, he had a choice. They say you can go down for the sexual assault or you can go down for uh killing these uh older people. Older people. I'm surprised there's no and I, it would have been worse for him to go down for killing the older people. I think either way he's done politically. He's done politically, but he don't go to jail. The lawsuits. Actually, there is still a case. The case, the sexual assault cases are actually still against him. So he yeah. might he still got a court and stuff, so and you notice the Me Too is gone. Shit, it died after Biden that got died in. with Joe Biden when, because yeah. So I think that one actual true story with some actual seen, validity to it was Biden's accuser, <laughs> but she was just totally dismissed. Just that's totally how you know that shit. Was, that's how you know that shit was real because that was just dismissed. It was women. Yes, women. It was. It wasn't even the people that were supporting Biden. It was just people that were just anti. That, that psychosis, case was real. That like that. I don't know what's wrong. People, the last four years has brought out how absolutely crazy society is. Like, yeah. people are unstable. A lot of people was able to walk around for a long time, you know, keep it together a little bit. But once Trump got in office, and especially when COVID hit, Shit hit the fan. they just, they lost all their marbles. Let me tell you, people have, you, the people's fuse is so short. Like, if somebody having a bad day and you so, say one, I quit. 
they just say I quit, walk out. Yeah, just this bounce. is how it is now. People just <laughs> don't have the patience of Job, as they say. Yeah, the patience of them. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, that was a crazy story. I, I, I'm like you said, I'm pretty sure he's not gonna serve any jail time at no, all. No, he's not gonna get uh, those three years. He's gonna he gonna have to pay some money out. The twenty five thousand dollar fine. Probably more. They might even give him. Talking about more. Yeah, he got to pay for all the time wasted, time wasted, man the, hours, the man hours, overtime. the overtime. He got to pay for all that shit, and they're gonna make him do uh community service. Community service. Probably put him with white community <laughs> service. Have him really, picking up really trash in white people neighborhoods and shit. <laughs> nah, but uh, my real thing is this is a script that Jesse he, has to fill out, and he and they, ain't gonna do shit. And they use this to push forth a legislative legislative bill. So if you want to live in a fantasy world, uh, that's what I was saying. A, if you want to live in a realistic world, this is a script, and Juicy gonna go on with his life. Exactly. He did so. what he's supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guess we can move on now. And if you've seen this, you already know we're going with this. Sex in the City. It's the new Sex in the City. As I said, every TV show that comes out now, like especially as all women, it's always that show. Was hey, a, you notice in every show now they have to put a fucking alphabet community person on the show now. That's, that, just, that's a staple. Yeah. You have to have somebody on the show that is of gay. the alphabet. Because yeah. on this show they have a dyke. Now this is a TV show right here. Amazon's new comedy can't avoid sex in the city but in key ways it surpasses it. Harlem is our generation sex in the city. If y'all haven't noticed every television show movie that, can, that has particularly four women that TV show, Sex in the City, is like, it was a culture white definer. Women. It's not just for white women anymore. I'll say back in the 90s when it came out, it was for white women. It's been defined now as modern. When you talk about, I think black women, Sex in the City was girlfriends. Girlfriends is compared to Sex in the City. Yeah. That's my point. Sex in the City is now the definition of what the modern woman is supposed to be. Ho, uh, mentally deranged, uh, uh, sexually confused, uh, narcissistic. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much the characters in those shows. But the part of the show we want to talk about because the show ain't made for us. So, you know. Oh, it ain't made for us. So it is what it is. But there is a particular scene in the show that got a lot of backlash. And it only was 45 seconds of the show. <clears throat> the show got a lot of backlash because of how it depicted a a, a scenario in a barbershop. Well, Matt, at least they, uh, at least they got, uh, at least they gave the dark skin, the darker skin black man a break. And they, they uh, chose to have a light skin dude in the scene to be vulgar. And then they the switched, scene. they switched up the role. They switched it up. I don't think that's new though. I'm, I'm, we're going to announce something later on, but there, there's a particular scene in a movie that I think kind of gets ignored when it comes to the light skin, dark skin thing. Remember you know, the I show. I wish that would go away. Remember the movie color purple. Mr.'s father was light skin. Yeah. And was he's worse the one than that him. Trained, he's the one that taught his son how to be, uh, they would say uh, abusive and treat women bad and such and such. And if I don't want to say it right now, cause I want to say it later, but I'm going to say it now. If you think about it, when you look into these modern uh, think pieces on masculinity in the black community, they always use the term that black men, because their masculinity has been subjected for so long, they're uh, a pretty much a caricature of masculinity now. And this, that's why, and this is what they say. Black men are violent and unable to love and be responsible and stuff because they've been subjected to the, under subjection for so long, they've been trained to act a certain way. So what they're saying is black men are just simply doing what they learn from Caucasian men. Uh-huh. So when I look at the movie Color Purple and you see her, his father, Mrs. Father is light skin. Is he supposed to be a representation of being closer to whiteness? Probably so. So Mr. Learn his. You're giving away too much. Okay. So y'all, y'all get my point. I'm going to go into that at some but point. Anyway, announce that later. Do we need to get rid of that light skin, dark skin term in the community? Do you think it divides the community? It's just descriptive. It's descriptive, but at the same time, uh, you feel that it harms? No? No. Okay. So let's go ahead and watch the scene that has some people pissed off. 
who did it have pissed off? Black men. And some black oh, women it had too. black men pissed off because of the way they try to depict black men. Yeah, it had some black women. And it had black women pissed off because they feel that they was doing what they agree with the black dudes. And you also had okay. some people that were like, "No, y'all lying. We've seen this before." Okay, I ain't never seen it before. Never. And remember, keep in mind this is based in Harlem. Now. In every situation I've ever been in a barbershop, one, if there's even any talking, <laughs> that's number one. If there's even much talking. Two, if they are talking, they're not. Sex is not really a topic you have in a barbershop consistently, especially not descriptive. Because there's children in there. Exactly. So what's the point of putting this scene in there? And they, they use it, uh, the point that, you know, this is only one scene. The character even acknowledges that this never happened. It's just one time thing. But if I only see this on the screen, this is the only representation I have I of the barbershop. That's what's going. That's the representation now. I believe that's what goes on in that barbershop. It goes on in barbershop. Exactly. No fries. No. You gonna handle this? He's no. He don't know the rules. Yo, Aunt, chill. We got a lady cut. Maybe the lady shouldn't try so hard to look like a dude. Barbershop's a safe space. You're not using the term safe space correctly, dumbass. Yeah, well, she just laying there all nutted on this shit. Yo, CJ, please, get your boy. Ty, what can I do? Aunt's family. I've been coming here for years. We have been, but me and Aunt are family. He's my mom's sister's son's nephew. We cousins, son. So anyway, I'm about to titty fuck the hoe, right? And then suddenly I realized Shorty got one titty bigger than the other. Fuck I'm this. Like, fuck <laughs> <you. I'm> <laughs> now keep in mind, this is supposed to be a comedy show. But they try to make a serious... But when, when the... Uh, subjecting women bodies. Exactly. So in this scene, uh, or in this show, should I say, it's a comedy, and it's supposed to be you know, four women in Harlem, New York. One's and, a dyke. Exactly. And it, the, I guess the writer or the one of the creators of the show, they made the point that they over-exaggerate some things because it's a comedy. But people like, ain't nothing funny. funny. There's nothing funny in this scene. The scene wasn't funny. The, the scene was very dark and serious. You could have made it funny. You, if you wanted to address the idea of a uh, negative uh, situation that happened in the barbershop. You could have did it in a funny way if you wanted it to be funny, but I don't even know how you would make that funny. <laughs> I mean, we supposed to laugh when he said he tried to, I guess yeah, the part the where one he, titty was bigger than the other. Yeah. I guess they're supposed to laugh. What's funny part. about that? I don't know. You, you kind of took the, the funny out when you got a person in the room whose expression expressing how uncomfortable they are. But she do the same thing with the titties. Don't she? <laughs> oh, she can't. <laughs> oh, um, she can pull out her dildo, I guess. Man, that that that, that dildo crazy boy. Jesus Christ. So even Van Lake to- <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Nah. Nope. Not gonna do it. Van Lathe even came out and made a point about uh <clears throat> about this. He said, Hate to be that guy, like hate. I'm all for black male accountability culture. We have to hold each other stand uh to standards so community can grow and evolve. That said, this saying from Harlem just isn't fair. I'm 41 years old, been in hundreds of black barbershops nationwide, never seen a black lady disrespect led like this. There are ladies in the shop of all for all kinds of reasons, and it's uh, always love and respect. I've seen disrespectful music. Hold on. I've seen disrespectful music. Yeah. Uh, I've seen disrespectful music turned down. I'm not saying this has never happened. But I'm, I'm saying just as we have to be careful about portrayal of our women, and LGBT brothers and sisters, we have to be also equally careful about the portrayal of our men. You see, brother, they don't care. Nope. They always try to paint you in the darkest light possible. They don't care about your image. Uh, we just talked about image uh, two or three weeks ago. Yeah, they don't care. You see right here, uh, niggas keep asking what show, like y'all can't read the cash. <laughs> now, this is I saw this one right here. Uh, he said, writing, acting, and a scenario is a stretch. I have short hair and getting cut, uh, get it cut at the barber all the time and have never uh, and have a short hair multiple times in life. I never seen this happen, but that's besides the point. Uh, it's lack of responsibility with the messaging that doesn't settle right with me. Yeah. If you look at that scene, what am I supposed to take from it? You, if put- you acknowledge in the scene or in the script throughout the show that this has never happened. This is a rare occurrence. So what what is what I'm that, supposed to take away from that? If I were to see that scene, 
and I had the mindset that, you know, these people have, I would say, oh, all men do is degrade women and talk about women and yeah, call yeah. them hoes. And all they see them as is just sexually objects that they can play with and do whatever they want to do with. Exactly. So if I look at that scene, let's say in, let's say in this scenario, she, she like I said, it says in the movie, in this, I'm sorry, in the uh, TV show, she acknowledges that this has never happened. She's been going there for years. And she's never had this happen. So why is the at the point where it's bad? Is that the highlight? Man, the character was jealous. <laughs> That's why she got up and left out of the barbershop. She was jealous. It wasn't penis envy, envy was it? It was penis envy. She ain't got one. Ain't never gonna have one. She gotta go buy one. It's sad. <laughs> but she obviously... Should, right, go ahead. She should have been trying to get that brother number. You see, I hear said the savage black male trope is alive and well since 1905, Birth of a Nation. Except this time, it's not the KKK that wrote this scene. It's black male Miss Sanders, and he named the two people that did it, Malcolm uh, Lee and Tracy Oliver. Tracy Oliver is the person, if I'm not mistaken, who did Girl Strip. Which is a horrible movie. They did 100 mil, baby, so. I'm sorry, the only all-female uh, comedy that was funny was Brides. Oh, uh, no. Made, the, white, uh, the white woman's, yeah, I'm going to say it. Oh no! I told you I love you, sisters, but I'm gonna be honest with you, girlfriends. I, I girlfriends. I mean, girls. I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't even see the Wait, whole movie. So you can't judge it then. I didn't see the whole movie, but you can't what judge I saw it. in the clip, what your I saw, opinion don't matter funny. no more. You write my opinion it's don't stopped. matter for, but it's I'm gonna tell now. you. No, I'm telling them the truth. <laughs> you said it too. The only female comedy that you liked was I didn't uh, say that. I didn't say that. Okay, what's another female? That's none comedy? of your business. <laughs> Ain't none of your so business. So you gonna leave me in the boat by myself and I? Hey, don't to... put me. Don't. Why are you trying to stick me on the damn ledge? You out by yourself. But anyway, he just tell me another female. Look, all let's female move comedy. on. Let's no, move. no, 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 no. Tell me an all female comedy that you like I don't want outside to. of brass. Because <laughs> you don't got one. I don't want to. So you being fake? That's right a good now. enough answer. You fake. Is that a good enough answer? I said I don't want to. It could be a good enough answer, but I'm gonna tell you, fake. <laughs> but look. So, but anyway serious again this this whole thing about how they portray black men in the media is obviously very important also something i've noticed the last couple of uh weeks maybe is these videos popping up on social media of these black men uh, not all of them are black men but these men walking into women's houses with them or uh, uh these women putting stories on this um, social media of them being followed and all this stuff and having evidence of it and you go what i know i know this is not new i know this happens kidnappings happen and all this other stuff sex trafficking but it seems to be an elevated uh level of video of it <laughs> there's a video that came up i saw now i don't even know if this what they said happened actually happened i just know if it did happen that way good on them well it seems like uh, the the door ring uh investment the ring, is a yeah, good ring door the door thing yeah it's a good investment to have. Maybe so. Let me just go there. Or they just maybe recording every single thing you do. Yeah. That don't too. even know it. Now, allegedly, the guy that's getting his tail whooped in his ass whoop <laughs> he was he actually followed the person in the house and he's like what are you doing you should never follow somebody into the house because you don't know if somebody's already got their thing their open you don't know what that's they got kinda, that's stupid what if she turned around on her purse and pulled out a pistol and just started she had every right to yeah every right to and she should so this is like an older man so was he a dude that has some problems mental problem was he you know or was he just a predator you could have mental we problems never know he could be a, he could have mental problems and still would have did something sick yeah so you know ass whooping is ass whooping gonna get got yeah. but when i saw this and i saw the response you had a lot of people like oh good uh finally like this never happens finally protecting black women it's sad to say that i i feel like we're the only group that when we do something that we should or supposed to do. It becomes just, a big thing. It becomes Negative a big positive. thing. It be, it's, it's like, oh, finally, like it, it, it never happens. Like this never like we happens. Just, we just sit there and let y'all get your ass whooped. 
when I'm, we well when we do go out and defend you like the nail when the nail uh salon shop things were going on we told you to stop going in fucking asians uh Sorry. shops and putting that shit in your hair no that was a nail place wasn't it it was the asian shop too we told him stop going to all asian <laughs> platforms don't go get your nails done there go to black businesses because black businesses have nails we really don't want you putting that shit in your head but there are you know women that have tried to start you know hair businesses yeah but you know they don't get support here's another story here uh you see here a woman notices three strangers following her so she hugs a random man and whispers help in his ear hold on all right you see here maddest thing uh is she didn't even know this guy and she approached near the station either, but she would trust it. Her gut, her name is Diane Weeks. He said, I'm walking to the train a few minutes ago and a woman walked uh, right up to me and gave me a tight hug and whispered quickly, please act like you know me. Three guys have followed me for a while. I played along. Then we walk, um, then walked her three blocks home. What an experience for both of us. I'm not going to act like I didn't hesitate because we're in New York. People set you up real quick. Her hug was too real to be fake. And three men was falling behind her at a distance. As uh as walked by and talked, I realized she was terrified. She kept saying, "I have to get home to her son." First things first, they say that uh she approached him and she trusted her gut. Uh, he he trusted his gut, gut too, too. <laughs> because she could have been sending his ass. Up you the know creek. how many people done got set up? Yeah, constantly, especially those uh on social media and stuff too. Like that could have easily went you left know, like, him. like uh when the, when the dude got set up he had been messing around <laughs> with a uh, girl and the and, the and she had a, had a girl yeah set him up that happens a lot it happens a lot but and that, the reason why i read that story right there is because the, the way they framed it was that she gave him the benefit of the doubt only when it was him when he all no she did give him some benefit of the doubt yeah but he also gave her some I think it was more so him because it's a stranger walking up to him asking Hugging for a me. hug. Three dudes are following. Those three dudes could have been with her. And they could have still followed both him of too. them and try to uh, attack him and still try to get to her. Like, I'm so just, at the end of the day, it was him taking it, a it bigger risk. It was two risk. people. It was two people taking a risk of faith. On each other. On each other. Being. But at the end of the day, he <laughs> took the bigger risk. <laughs> you stuck a heat? Because most people would have said, I called the cop. I called I call you an Uber. I call you, yeah. Oh, they would have asked that. Why you didn't just call an Uber? So I stand right well, here calling. Ain't Uber. got no money to call an Uber. She do have a oh, son. Yeah. There you go. There, I, there I go. Now you just there you, go. you had to had to pull it in there, didn't you? Couldn't just be a good person for a little bit. That was me being a good person. Saying she got no money because she got a kid. She ain't got no. I'm just what I'm saying. She's a mother. She has. That a means son. she broke. Not many she broke, but she made you know not got it what it is. So he was nice enough to just walk the lady home. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you live. <laughs> All right, uh, let me see here. Speaking of lies on people, uh, recently, the Justice Department closed its investigation into Emmett Till killing after failing to prove key witnesses lied. Didn't she confess in a, in a memoir that she lied? She reneged. She recanted it. What? Yes. The Justice Department has officially closed the investigation into the infamous killing of Emmett Till without federal charges for a second time. She recanted the story. How can you say that somebody did it and then you recant it well, and say? What happened? I'm going to read it. I'll show you what the dude said. <sighs> just, get, get, just get to the, ritty, the nitty gitty. The Justice Department has officially closed the investigation into the infamous killing of Emmett Till without federal charges for a second time, leaving only more questions after a potential significant claim. A uh, potentially significant claim for one of the last living witnesses led investigators for a fresh hunt of evidence. In 2017, Professor Timothy Tyson unearthed what appeared to be a key piece of evidence in one of the most haunting and grisly murders documented in the Jim Crow era, a, recant a, recant a, recant a, recant a recantation from the woman at the center of the case who had accused Teal of making sexual advances at her over 60 years ago. Yet another exhaust, uh, exhaustive investigation, the Justice Department Civil Rights Division has now concluded it cannot prove the woman lied to federal investigators about her story. After CNN reported the development in the case earlier Monday, the department subsequently made, it public, uh, <clears throat> made public a memo explaining the evidence investigators renewed, reviewed 
and his reasons for closing the matter without federal charges. So we already know what happened to him. Uh, uh, the supposed to report a confession set up for firestorm of calls of for authorities to reopen the cold case. Is it really a cold case? We know who did it. We know who a cold it. case is like when you, you don't, don't know have who did it. Nothing. You you know who did it. They died. The two men that did it, they don't passed away already. A husband, and I guess a, I forgot a cousin or a friend or something. But uh, the Justice Department has already re-examined the case once and concluded in 2007 that no one could be prosecuted at the federal level based on the evidence available and the statute of limitations had long since run out. Armed with Tyson claim, federal investigators once again spoke to Donham. The goal, sources uh, familiar with the investigators said, was to determine if Donham actually recanted her previous testimony in her interview with Tyson. And if so, what other evidence she might be willing to provide that could shed light on her role in the killing or and identifying others who might be culpable. A recanta uh, recantation would directly contra uh, contradict both her testimony at the state proceedings in 1955. It was in 1955? Yeah. I thought that was like 1940s, 30s. It was just in 1955. They always tell you, oh, it happened so long ago. No, it didn't happen that long ago. And the statements uh, she provided to the FBI during the previous investigation. Yet when questioned directly, Donham admit adamantly denied to investigators that she had recanted her testimony and other investigators uh, ran into additional uh, evidentiary uh, problems. The most damning statements Tyson attributed to Dunham were not recorded or transcribed, and he gave authorities inconsistent statements on whether a recording had ever been made. The Detar department said Tyson took some notes of the conversation, but he could not provide a firm timeline on where and when her confession reportedly happened. Do these facts would preclude the government for providing beyond a reasonable doubt that Donham recanted her previous testimony when speaking with Tyson and therefore that she lied to the FBI when she denied having done so, the department wrote Monday. There remains considerable doubt as to the credibi credibility of Donham's original account of what happened inside the store. However, there is no witness the government could now call to disavo disavo dis disapprove of her account. When reached uh, for comment via email, Tyson provided a lengthy statement standing by his story. My reporting is rock solid. Carolyn Bryant denies it in a voice taking, talking about it like it was the plague. I am standing in public square telling the truth as I've seen it based on solid evidence. So basically, when he got the recantation from her, he didn't record it. I don't believe it. <laughs> you think he had a recording? I think he has some sort of fact, something that he can provide to show that, yeah. He had notes. That's it. You know what? She a wicked bitch. When she die. Just, uh, here's the thing. I, wanna, I got something for here's, her. Here's how I found this whole article weirdly framed. Let's say he did say something to her. And somebody still murdered him. He didn't sexually assault her. It's, Somebody murdered him. He said he did sexual ad advantages, like when somebody, you know. Flirt. Flirt. But he didn't actually sexually assault her. My point is, why are they focused on that rather than he was murdered? Because in that time era, you couldn't even make sexual. No, 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 no. I'm talking. See, that's what I'm saying. They found a way to convince us to worry about whether or not he actually whistled or flirted with the woman. That don't matter. He was murdered. Well, they're saying his murder was justified because he did sexually advantage. He so did flirting with somebody you said to die? Flirting with a white woman in 1955. That was just like a sexual assault. So you, it was death penalty for you. Okay. 2021. Having sex with a white woman, she accusing you of having sex with a white woman and she is okay with it and then she goes back and says that you rape her will get you thrown in jail for rape. But niggas still I haven't can't, woken I can't up. let that ride because anybody, Why? that happened with anybody. What you mean? Anybody can do that to you now. Yeah, but white women are mostly known for doing it. Yeah, I'm just saying when you said that, it's like <laughs> the whole game is flipped up now because anybody what, can get you What race of women tend to do the most? Caucasian. And who they mostly do it towards? I definitely wouldn't say just black dudes. I think 
Well, how many stories have we seen of uh, of other races of men getting out of prison due to the fact that they were accused of rape? What stories I put up the most is that? Just, are you just saying that's just propaganda? This ain't propaganda. Meaning they only talk about it when it happens to black men. How many? What story can you name where a white? Woman I can't name no story because okay, I don't then. care about it. It's so that you can't really ask me because I don't. But if there was one that was that had national attention and made attention, but we would know about it, right? The problem is I don't. We, we would don't know keep, about it, right? If it made national attention. Yeah, we would okay, know about then. it. My point is, we don't look up those stories either. You don't have to look up the stories. You don't have to look up stories. Stories will come to you if it makes national attention. It'll be trending. You'll see it, right? I guess. So, nigga, shut up and let it go. <laughs> Stop trying to defend these white hoes. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, sh- All right. <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> Anywho. So. Oh. Now we got it out of the way. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> Going into a little politics earlier. Why the media <clears throat> is worse for Biden than Trump. Now there was an article written. <clears throat> right around Afghanistan. When, they, when he pulled out of Afghanistan. This article was written. And they were saying how, man, because of this, the media just piling on him and <laughs> poor Joe <laughs> treating him so badly. <clears throat> we need to really let up on him, you know? No, he's a president. You, you're not supposed to let up on a president's ass. You're supposed to hold him accountable. He's running the fucking free world for crying out loud. <laughs> but then, he don't get passes. But then there was an article released, another one that came out recently. Um, as you can see here. Opinion, the media treats Biden as badly as or worse than Trump. That's a lie. Now, in this article, they went through with AI to look up all the uh, hits across social media of Biden and certain keywords to determine the uh, influence, negative or positive, that Biden has to deal with. Now, in the article, it showed that majority of the most popular television shows are all uh, conservative, by the way, at the top 30 conservative and then like i think a liberal or right i mean a left-leaning one is like number 24 so conservatives dominate media but if you look at the alternative media and stuff it's a lot more left progressives exactly so his argument was not only is the right wing and against trump the quote-unquote left wing they're uh tougher on him too because they certain things they want him to do and it's like, is it negative or is it simply wanting a politician you voted for to do something? Exactly. I put you in the White House and I expect for you to fulfill the policies and the things that you said you was going to do. But black people, we didn't ask Joe Biden to do nothing, so he ain't doing shit for us. <laughs> As you can see here. This is an article written here, <clears throat> and they responded to that report. They said, stop being mean to me. <laughs> White House holds secret meetings with news organizations to demand better publicity for Biden as Washington Post columnist claims president is being treated worse than Trump. Can you imagine if <laughs> Donald Trump administration had a meeting with the media, uh, with the news and telling them that shit would be the, can you, but the president Trump is, can you, can you believe what the, uh, the stuff, media would be? The spin the, on that would be? The stuff that can happen the last year is crazy. We in a fucking twilight zone. That's whatever what happened in. Whatever happened to the kids in cages? They're still there. They're still in cages. I, I, allegedly, people care so much about it. They were fake crying on TV, everything. Oh, you mean AOC with her big ass teeth went down there and did a photo op with those other Mexicans? Three senior White House officials have embarked on a campaign to persuade newsroom executives to be more favorable in their coverage of President Joe Biden, according to the report on Tuesday night. The trio, National Economic Council's Deputy Directors David uh, Kamen and uh, whatever, whatever, along with Perry Envoy, John Pokori, and <clears throat> have been briefing major newsrooms over the past week, according to CNN's media correspondent Oliver De- uh, Darcy. What? Darcy is a newsletter, uh, in his newsletter said that the outreach was sparked by concern that Biden was not being treated fairly. Biden has been treated more than fairly. How many days did it take Biden to do his first press conference? 
How was about, it, it was what? It was 180 days before he did his first press conference? I don't know the exact date, the exact month. Time. Something like that, probably. Why is it that when Biden speaks to the public? He don't answer questions. He already screens the questions and tells them what questions he wants them to ask him. He only asks for certain. He only answers questions from certain uh, reporters there. Matter of fact, didn't they have a, a brief room that's not even in the White House? It's across the street from the White well, House. He took his, uh, took his booster. <laughs> and the media didn't say nothing. But somehow, President Biden is being treated. No, he's not being treated worse than Donald Trump. The The... The administration is so fucked <laughs> and people can see through it from both sides. They just like, what the fuck? What did what? How we cover this? Like the man said, uh, the stuff he's saying is just, but yeah, Darcy wrote the officials have been discussing the newsroom trends pertaining to job creation, economic growth, supply chains, and more. But Oh yeah. And not only that, having a president, vice president like Kamala Harris, who is so disliked. Exactly. Does not help his administration at all. You know, another thing they did right, they, they're using the, his job, quote unquote, job creations he's done. They're trying to make give him credit for the jobs people are going back to right now. Oh, look, five million jobs have came why back. Why don't he create some jobs? No, 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 no. The reason why he got five million jobs created or whatever the number is, is because people left their jobs during COVID and now they're going back to him. He didn't create the job. People are just going back. <laughs> they, he, he didn't make a new job. People just went back to their job. Yeah, and you know what? You would have more people working if he didn't have mandates, federal <laughs> oh. mandates. President Donald Trump did not have federal mandates. He left it up to the states, individual states, to decide how did they want to run their state and what policies they wanted to implement. You want to create some jobs, have some people go out there in fucking California and get, them, get that shit off them damn shipping containers in the damn ocean that's still sitting there. The you know these people got to have their toilet paper. <laughs> the basic argument has been made. The country's economic is as much better shaped than it was last year. Now notice he only compared it to last year. Look, last it don't matter if you're a fan of Trump or not, but before 2020, the economy was booming. Whether notice it was in fake that booming or not, it was booming. Regardless how you feel about it, you notice in this article, they compared this year to just last year. They didn't say the last four years. They didn't say the last administration. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because if they did, it would be some tough numbers to follow. You see right here? Look at this right here. Biden re-election polls show dismal 22% support. Harris even worse at 12%. Mm. His numbers should go up now because he just possibly... Did some negotiations with uh, Russia that might have stopped a war from happening in the Ukraine over the Ukraine, but uh, that's it's gonna go up twenty five, three percent. Don't nobody give a. F oh no, they do well, care. That's a big concern. Yeah, that's though. yeah, that's, that's a tripping. Big. Let me take that back. You tripping? That is a that's a big thing that uh, Barack Obama uh, managed to accomplish to get done for the country is you know getting Russia off back oh you think uh obama the one who did it do we <laughs> we really we seriously want to have this conversation about who's the wizard behind the curtain the numbers are cringeworthy 22 percent and 12 percent that's support for president biden and Cam vip kamala harris in a new poll it asked that would you vote for the 2024 election even if the doubt of a veracity of polling these are poor numbers yeah, even if, i mean that's, that's a you right, it is a fake poll. I think it's more like twelve like percent for him and uh five percent for her. No, it ain't. Because people are still willing to vote for him over Trump. Ain't that low. <laughs> Where you get that from? People are still willing to vote for him over Trump. No, I know it. Cause who? With the shit that's going on right now. What you mean how I know? The stuff the, the I mean, look, the psychotic stuff people are saying about with this pandemic, they'll vote for him again over Trump. They still ain't learned. But yeah, let me show y'all this right here too. This is an article on Kamala Harris. Her failing is not an option. Harris convenes black women and charts the path ahead. So <laughs> she's starting to feel pressure. And you know who she's falling back on to try and build a level of a brick wall to hold her up? Her shield. Black women. She's falling back on black women. 
every single time these politicians get in the hurt spot, hurt spot, they run straight to the black community. So you see, this when Vice President Kamala Harris walked into her uh, ceremonial office on Monday, a room full of black women greeted her, uh, greeted her there and in person and on Zoom, waiting for some uh, uh, deliverables. In a private meeting, nearly 20 members of the black women uh, leaders and allies, a coalition of groups focused on civil rights issues, shared their recommendations on how the Biden administration could strengthen the right to vote without legislation passed by Congress, according to the officials in attendance. And senior aides and the VP ticked through a long list of focus on updates on domestic and foreign policy priorities for Harris and the widely known to the more obscure. Who is the right to vote for? Uh, what is the get to the right to vote for without who no 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 they're saying if you're not gonna get the legislation passed let's find a way to do it without getting legislation passed who's that legislation for the right to vote it's supposed to be for black people don't we already have the right to vote they said they need to uh strengthen it what more strength do we need to get your remember get your ass to the dance pole yeah it wasn't a problem last year apparently i don't know <laughs> apparently it was wait a minute am i living it it was easy to get out and vote last year. Now it's hard. Are we living in a twilight zone? Since when? Why can't black people vote? What, what's going on? I don't understand. What, what, they're saying that there was a black people. It's harder for black people to vote. Remember How? Stacey Abrams brought it out. It's harder for black people to vote. You know. How, why, why I, don't ask me. I don't know. Like I'm sitting here. <laughs> yeah, going you interrogate crazy. me like I'm saying it. They saying it's hard for black black people to vote. They need to pass legislation to help black people vote. So no, it's we know hard. The, it's hard for those. 8,000 illegal citizens. 8,000. Oh, 800,000 <laughs> illegal citizens to vote, and they're trying to get voter registration passed for them, and they're using black women <laughs> as the face to get it done, I suppose. <laughs> Damn, I don't understand. Yeah, it's crazy out there, man. <laughs> Y'all don't know, right? I, I just, I just want to... <laughs> what world are we living in? But they'll tell you it's, and it's just like you sit here like uh, like I'm crazy. Like I don't saying like you're crazy. I just what's, what am I getting irate for? We know the game. So this is the uh, photo they released from the situation. The situation room as we'll call it. This really was a room to make Kamala look closer to her black. Oh, look, this black woman, we need to get behind her. We gotta get behind her. Her numbers I, are really bad right now. No one likes her. I, I could comment on. I know what you're about to say. Them, and I, go I'm ahead, say it. Say it. A, a black woman said it in the comments. You can say it. Oh, they all thick yes, as hell. A black woman said it's like an unhealthy table. <laughs> that's, <laughs> what a, that's what a black woman said. She said the table looked unhealthy. <laughs> listen, the, the, listen. When Kevin Samuels be talking about black men like black women size two, three, okay, if that's your thing, we like them thick. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you could pull it off, you know, if you're thin in the waist, thick in the ass, thick in the base. Away, but come on, every last one of them at the Not table of them. besides one or two. It wasn't one or two. Two. Go back to the picture. Go back to the picture. It's a half of the table. This side right here is not. So. No, that oh, side yeah. has got big arms too. We got one. The one right there. All right, the, look. We're not gonna. No, what we're not gonna do. <laughs> You're not gonna go through. And just it's one at the table, <laughs> two, the one in the white, and the one next to the lady with the black and white on. Mm. Oh, this is Miss. Now I want to show this picture right quick. It it's, it really has nothing to do with the conversation. I just want to show this picture. Another big one. If listen, when people say you know when you look at this stuff deeper and they call you conspiracy theorists and call you crazy, give me a re give me a, an answer to why this woman took the American flag or a a a a uh what's we call it and put it in her hand and covered in an eye tell me why this picture was taken what's and the point also of this picture? the as above the mirror so i'm below. just saying if i'm just conspiracy theorist and always bringing up stuff tell me what this picture's uh supposed to mean she doesn't represent the the mother goddess the feminine she represents the masculine and she's obviously now running for governor and she's again running for governor so please tell me what i'm supposed to take away from this picture as a matter of fact she has on the all white that's goddess. So, I, I just want to show that picture because it's, you know. Because they all into that shit. They're, they're, they're tired of doing their, uh, they're worshiping Baal and Pan and all these different entities behind the scene. They're ready to bring this shit to the forefront. they like, we tired of being in dark rooms and doing this shit. 
She's the vice president. All right, now. Oh, oh, let, let's get started on another crazy. Now, these two right here. So now Kamala's numbers are falling still. She's trying to uh, lean on the black um, group to hold herself up. And Black News Channel had a segment on how we need to rally behind her. These two have the worst segment on Black News Channel. I, I um, subscribed to this channel when it first started just to see what it turns into. And it turned into what I thought it would turn into. And you called this lady out in the beginning. You I said, said it. something seriously every time we talk about mentally this woman. wrong with this woman and i was like no uh i think she's a beautiful sister and you know let's that was the first episode i was like let's give her a chance episode i saw another show then another show and i'm just like i just she's crazy something's wrong with her but she has no respect for black men at all but i'm going to show you what these two had to say about how and why we should rally behind Harris. <laughs> and she's not a black woman. She's not. Shouldn't have to say that right now, but you know, you gotta keep saying it. You gotta keep drilling it into that damn wig. Nah, right, that alone. she's not a black alone. woman. Of the United States, Mike. Mm -hmm. And she gets no respect. Mm -hmm. None. None. You know? And so at this point, mm -hmm. we're because I talked to Misha Cross about this. Uh I, the day is all mm -hmm. run by, but recently. And said, look, isn't mm -hmm. it time for us to flex? And what I meant by that is it's time for black people and black women. We're used to doing the heavy lift to rally. behind. It does, I don't even care if you voted for her. You wanted someone else in the primary. That's not what we're talking about. Black mm -hmm. woman, we stand with you, sister. It's time for that. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. time to say no more. It's time to take an army you know, like some other people do on some other seedier sides of some issues. It's time to take an army and say, no, you're not going to start spamming these idiot reporters who are writing about approval ratings. And now, that's what you suppose, but they're supposed to put out approval so ratings. So approval ratings don't matter no more. So they want to have a million black women march to march on the Capitol. No, no, she didn't say black women. She said black people. They want to have a million women march to march on Washington, D.C. to say stop treating Kamala Harris bad and disrespecting her. They see it as putting out polls and truth that she don't know what the fuck she doing as bullying her. You're not supposed to call out her because she's a quote unquote black woman, right? Because they don't get held accountable for shit. Oh, shit. Uh, Jefferson is bad this episode, y'all. <laughs> This the dumb shit. Dumb damn wigs. They need to take that shit off their head and wear their natural hair. Then they maybe they'll have some fucking sense. No, nah, it's time to do that. And one of the and women are coming together, by the way, on her behalf. And one of the people doing mm -hmm. that is her lifelong friend. And sometimes you need people who've been with you. They've been mm -hmm. riding with you forever to say, oh, you not to you're not about to do this. You're not about to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to stand with each other, period. We need to do yeah. better when it comes to that. I'm not saying that black people don't support black because black people support black people. We need to do a better. Black people support things they agree with. Look, man. Look at him. Sound like Uncle Ruckus. How you <laughs> all ignore the things she's want? She told you she's not doing anything for just black people. Shout out to Professor Black, but no black authority. We get them mixed up. <laughs> Better job. Uh, you know why we get them mixed up, but I'm not just going to do anything for black people. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Why should we rally behind this woman who says she's not gonna, just going to do anything specific for us? But when that Asian, anti-Asian bill was passed, she took that because she considers herself Asian. Asian. Yeah. And that was pride to her. <laughs> but for your black ass, she says she's not doing anything just for you. Because black people, we don't get to have anything just for us. We have to include everybody and share everything with everybody else. And our dumb asses still have not woken up and noticed that yet. We keep on allowing it. I'm doing that. There's so much to do. For anybody else to have our back. There is so We can't talk about 
the fact that she doesn't uh, have a, a, a Bluetooth uh, earphone, that's stupid. That's dumb. That shouldn't even been a story. Uh, if she's wearing chucks today or she's. Wait, well, she, she chose to see that shit. She put that out to see what shoes she was wearing. She intentionally got off the plane, Warren had Tim. the camera go down to her uh, damn feet. That was so she could say, well, I'm black too. She had that. That's her little swag that, you know, copy Barack Obama shit. Yeah, she, that she was doing. Yeah, she didn't walk around. She the one that chose to walk around in Tim's and Chuck Taylor's. That wasn't that wasn't no organic situation. He's wearing uh 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 Timberlands tomorrow with her. I don't care about all that. I don't care about her pantsuits. I care about what she's doing for this country and getting behind this black woman. You said vice president, woman vice president, <laughs> a black woman vice president. So I don't care about when people say about her approval. That shit should be way lower than that. Uh, that's why that, that's why y'all. So hold, See, hold this on. tells me that the Black News Channel is obviously just an it's just an outfit for them to push propaganda for the Democratic Party. Yeah, because they now they're doing they're doing cover for. Kimberly Let me Harris. tell you something. How can y'all call yourself a Black News Channel after what this woman said? I thought this channel was supposed to be about. Uh, well, we 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 passed that now. We know it's yeah. owned by Indian dude or whatever, so we know it's not. If it's a Black News Channel, I think they would be holding. Not just black politicians to the fire. Everybody in the world. And notice, the the they didn't say you need to stand behind Biden. They said stand behind Kamala, Kamala Harris. See, what, see, they understand that these numbers don't look good for her in 2024. Because she's going to try and run for president in 2024. So they like, this ain't looking good. We got to start fixing this now so it don't go too far by 2022. Y'all can do it. Y'all can try to paint her in the most positive if, light as you want to. If elections are... As fair as they supposed to be. Ain't no way she Wait, win. If a list are as fair as they supposed to be, after the last year, just the last year, they wouldn't be able to get back in, the, the Democrats wouldn't be able to get back in office until like 2030. It would be so long before they have a chance to get back in office if this shit was really a republic. But you know. Google ratings are down and low and all that type of stuff. So what? All right. <laughs> the, the 70% of Republicans in this country don't even believe that she is the vice president. Okay, so there's that. So she ain't- What they gotta do with what them? What Republicans gotta do with this? Nothing. Ain't ever probably ever gonna get past 50%. Uh, Joe Biden's never gonna get past 50% because the nation is not united. So wait, wait, wait. So when 50%, it was Trump- Wait, wait, wait. 81 million people voted for Biden. He should be able to get 50%. He won the majority vote. He should be able to get the 50% approval. That means people who voted for him. <laughs> aren't y'all tired of these boule Negroes? Aren't y'all tired of them being the face and the and the speaking for us in, as in general? <sighs> the fucking boules. They black gatekeepers. The, the no, that would be as that guy described it, the black political class. That's who they are. Their job is to take black struggle and turn it into an opportunity for them and their families. This is who. That voter legislation law, that that's what they're trying to get passed for. This is who that's for. Yeah. New York set to approve measure allowing 800,000 non-citizens to vote in local elections. Now, how much of that 800,000 do you believe are going to be black immigrants? The New York City Council Thursday set to approve measure that will allow uh, for non-citizens who are, who are legal residents to vote in local elections. Under the bill, individuals who have lived in the city for at least 30 days, 30 days. What just happened like two months ago? The Afghan? Oh, yeah. So wait a minute. You can live in this country for, for 30, 30 days, days and, vote. and have rights. People who've been here for over 400 years. Still. <laughs> so you was here for how long? 200 years before you could vote? 200 something years before you could vote? And get in 30 days. But uh, 30 days in illegal permanent residence in the U.S., including green car holders and individuals with workers' permits and uh, DACA holders. Now, that, when you hear that word DACA, you're it's automatically Mexican. associated with fucking Mexicans. Yep will be allowed to vote in the city elections, including mayor, public advocate, borough president, and city council. That's where it's all about. Local. <laughs> That's why they can't get that bill through. They're trying, to, they're trying to use the black thing on top of it, but slip that into the papers. And it's the black people that's helping us, and they know what they know what this shit is for. They know what it's for. And they're going along with it. All right, next discussion. Reparations for Black America. There was a discussion held by uh, I think it's USA Today. It was USA Today. USA Today had uh, had a Twitter Spaces discussion about reparations, where they 
went through the uh pros and again I mean, uh, we get a pro reparations and the anti reparation people and really it was only one two people uh it was one or two people who were anti, wasn't it? It was they were white. His well, name is David Crook or Cook. <laughs> well, he was was he against it? And there was one was named the one David Manifesto. Man- 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 yeah, he was the one who was against it. Yeah, he was the one who was against it. Hold on, I got a name. The name is right here. Uh David Mas- uh, Mastillo. And um this dude Dr. Blackness, he's <laughs> yeah. I, I think he's one of those, you know, he's another one of those guys that pushed this thing where we need he would like push the idea we need not just money we need spiritual reparations we need all this other he stuff into that we from africa motherland bullshit yeah he i don't he know don't, yeah i won't say he's a pan african i don't know if he he's, is i'm not gonna say he's a pan african but he made sure to identify us as african people he definitely was sending some subliminals at ados he definitely was but yeah uh, i'm gonna go ahead and let it play some of it uh it was a this woman here we did a video on her uh a couple months ago when she sued Harvard for using her ancestors' pictures in their book. That's Tamira K. Tamira K. Uh, Laner. Yep. This is the, her pictures there in the middle, the bottom middle. She was slicing them up. <laughs> yeah, she was slicing and dicing. You can tell she well versed. There was a couple more people in there too that was slicing and dicing. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a very good uh, discussion. Um, yeah, she was slicing yeah. them up. She was slicing up in there. She made some very good points. Let me go ahead and get to it now. Hold on. Thanks so much, everybody, for your patience. Uh, as I said earlier, hearing on November, I think um, this country had spoken about before she started her lawsuit. So, Tamara, I'm going to kick it off to you. Just briefly tell people who may not be familiar with who you are and with your story, um, what your story is uh, in relation to Harvard, um, and talk about your enslaved ancestors. I'll mute so you can go ahead and, and, and take them off, Tamara. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Um, But in regards to my lawsuit, the Lanier v. Harvard lawsuit, I like to think it's perhaps the first and last lawsuit of its kind. Um, In addition to reparations, this this complaint invokes the issues of decolonization, repatriation, sexual exploitation, cultural appropriation. And it also raises um, the issue of a person's right to generational inheritance, specifically my right to inherit property from my enslaved ancestors. Um, The case raises many very complicated legal questions that have never been raised before. And because of slavery and the destruction of the Black family, it is very hard for a person to have standing to raise these issues in court. Um, and, and I am fortunate enough to say that, yes, and I've proven and I've demonstrated that I do have standing to speak on behalf of my enslaved ancestors in the Massachusetts Supreme Court demanding my right to a generational inheritance from my ancestors, specifically the property that I'm talking about are, they're referred to as the slave daguerreotypes. They're images of my enslaved ancestors, but specifically the property, the daguerreotypes are currently held by Harvard University. Harvard University. The fact that she has to actually sue to get the rights to those it's a shame. because once again, they look at as property as he, property. He was they, property at the time, so we're allowed to keep these pictures. That goes back to the Emmett Till. They're still going by what the laws were then. What the laws were then, not what the laws are now. In 1850, in an act that was criminal, in an act that defied the Commonwealth of Massachusetts state law, commissioned these images. And not only did they commission these images, but they used them for a scientific study to prove white supremacy. And these daguerreotypes were to be used as propaganda. And what they did was they stripped enslaved people, including two of my ancestors, and they took 
pictures proclaiming that they were ocular proof of black inferiority. And they used that and they promoted this throughout the country during a time when this country was divided between the issues of slavery and emancipation. So I had the good fortune of discovering not only the daguerreotypes, but also the amazing story behind how they came to be. And after years of discussion with Harvard, I finally filed a lawsuit because Harvard not only had appropriated my enslaved ancestors' legacy, they also appropriated their dignity. And so Harvard refused to, to show these images in a way that respected my enslaved ancestors, Rinti and Delia. And that was kind of the catalyst for the lawsuit. Yeah, so she went on to um, lose, or at least the court at the first court uh, denied her and sided with Harvard. Then she had a second case where they acknowledged that Harvard has to um, approve certain things that were in favor of her. Yeah. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Real for me. So it's not, you know, oftentimes we hear people say, you know, that happened so long ago, move on. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the generational trauma associated with slavery was real to my family. And that is one of the things that I feel motivates me the most is how much this impacted my family, how much this meant to my father, my family, and how much it meant to Papa Renty. Well, that, uh, Tammy, brings up so many questions. It, it also reminds me of um, David Mastio. I'm going to bring you in now. Uh, it, it makes me think about the opposing view that you wrote. Um, we, we ended uh, b- right before uh, tonight's discussion Uh, the reparations project with an editorial debate. Um, As many of you know, USA Today does not just put out editorials. We believe in showing the other side of the conversation, showing the other side of the debate. So not only do we publish our editorial, we also generally publish an opposing view. And for this particular debate, um, the opposing view was written by David Mastio, who is a member of the editorial board. Um, David, Tamara just talked about the fact that slavery really wasn't that long ago, that this part of America's history really is kind of tangible and touchable. It's touchable through stories that are passed down over generations. I can remember interviewing my own grandfather about his grandmother who had been a slave. But often, and you touched on this a bit, David, in your opposing view, when we talk about reparations for African Americans, Usually we think of slavery as something that happened so long ago and, and people whose ancestors may not have been here during that time wonder if they should be responsible on some level for repair. So, David, talk about how you re- respond to that, to, to the idea Tamara brought up that this isn't that long ago and this is a history that is very touchable and very real. Well, first off, in in the opposing view, I made clear that in individual cases where there's where there's a clear harm and there's a specific person who can be. Well, he said clear harm. I didn't really understand what he meant by that. When he said clear harm, did he mean direct? When he says clear harm, I, I believe he is saying. But I can show. Yeah, he don't Amongst- understand that. He doesn't understand that by there being slavery, that it trickled down and it causes harm. Other no, not just slavery, Jim Crow, the Jim redlining, Crow, the redlining, so the mass incarceration. When he said it doesn't affect you clearly, it's like, well, what does that mean? They're not. He's never going to understand. I don't expect who can receive uh, restitution. Uh, I don't oppose reparations. So in 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 her case, you know, I would I would be on the side of her uh, of her her lawsuit where I have a a disagreement with the movement for reparations is when we get into, uh, into reparations as, 
as benefits for a whole class of people. For you mean benefits for a whole nation, an entire group, rather than one person. Throughout history, things have only happened to a group, not individuals. You don't pay back to individuals, you pay back to a group. The problem is they don't want to provide reparations for the entire group because if reparations are provided to the higher, to the entire group, then that group is removed from the bottom and somebody else has to go to the bottom. Well, they really want, don't want to do it because it will bankrupt the country. It, it's just... <laughs> or not just all, the country. All, black, yeah. all African Americans or, uh, or all, all Native Americans. Why they every time? Every time you talk, they talk about, about black Americans, they always got to bring in another sector, where it be Native Americans or it be uh, that's really number Hispanic. one. Hispanic. They really just be Native American. They don't even bring Hispanics up as often as they bring Native Americans up. The Native American. Every time they talk about reparations for Black Americans, they make sure to bring up Native Americans. Native Americans have already gotten their reparations. They have reservations. They own uh, casino clubs. Uh, they they literally are a sovereign uh, nation. You mean sovereign? Sovereign nation. Sorry. Like, uh, they were awarded half of Oklahoma. It, it, they finally had that story just went nowhere. Like it's just matter of <laughs> fact, they just passed the law for them too. The Native, oh yeah, Native American hate the no Native American Violence Act, something like that. And they get checks. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't that girl say the real? I'm not, I'm a real Native American. <laughs> no, you're a fake Native American. You're a mongoloid Native American. You're fake. Uh, rather than the, the specific people who who were were harmed by government government policies, an example of that is with the reparations that went to the Japanese. You know, we gave reparations to the Japanese who were uh, who were targeted by government policy. We didn't give it to all Japanese people. Well, um and I think it I think it's really important for why would you give it to all Japanese people? You would only give it to the ones that they harmed, it affected that it directly affected. You ain't gonna give it to Japanese people over there in Japan, <laughs> you dumb ass. Well, I guess he meant only the people that they put in the camps. So the Japanese Americans who weren't in the camps didn't get nothing. Why would the Japanese people who weren't in the camps get awarded a well, reparation see, if they weren't that, in the camp? But it goes back to our point, he don't see a connection between uh, the laws and legislation passed against black Americans as affecting all black people. It affects he, all black people. He think it only affected that generation or those people not understanding when you lower the wealth of an entire generation and they can pass less to the next generation, it's going to get lower and lower and lower and lower. That's the point. But he don't see it as hurting because he thinks the next generation is supposed to bootstrap it. You know, all right, your grandparents didn't leave nothing. You gotta, you gotta build something to leave it to your kids. You got you got to start from scratch every generation, pretty much. For Americans, the way the way Americans think of our our country is that we're a country of individual rights and individual justice, not group rights and group justice. Um, in that policies that have been created now that are very much linked to things that have been government. Um, policies that affect all African Americans, such as Jim Crow, for example, or housing policies that have affected um, a great majority. Do you know how much land and homes were stolen from African Americans? And that, you tell me that this don't affect that entire lineage. Yeah. When you get property, it's taken from you. Yep. If a white person said, "I want that land," they get the land, and you, they, you got to get your ass off the land. So I'm not. I'm not understanding. How he knows all this stuff. <laughs> he knows this. The of African Americans and disenfranchised Black communities exponentially more than white communities have been disenfranchised. How do we respond to that if not in a in a way that um, lifts up all African Americans? Because these policies have affected all African Americans. I'll throw that out to everyone. I'm just sort of springboarding off of Dave's. Dave's comment, Dave, this isn't solely for you to answer, but I'm opening this up to the panel. Well, I I, I would like to. Uh -huh. 
Oh, she's going to compare what he's saying to about the Jews and the yeah. Holocaust. Yeah, yeah. So this is <laughs> I had a show. Yeah, she, she killed it right here. Um, just respond to that. Um, and all due respect, one of the things that I think about when I hear people say that, you know, uh, when they talk against reparations and the rationale for it, <clears throat> one of the things that we have to look at is the historical context of the use of reparations. And first of all, go, dating back to slavery was when the first um, I believe after the slaves are freed, the slaveholders in this country were the first to receive reparations for the slaves that they lost. And then we can move forward, and I may be skipping examples of when this country has paid reparations, but we moved to the Japanese Americans and those that were victimized. So it isn't like, you know, we're saying, okay, only the blacks who were enslaved are the ones who are going to get reparations because what we're talking about is the entire black population. So it's hard to say, to make this the analogy that, I'm sorry, the gentleman just made where he's talking about just the, the, those that were interned, the Japanese that were interred, that they got reparations. Slavery affected all black Americans, all African Americans. And not only that, but then we move forward and we look at um, the, 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 what happened um, with the Holocaust. And not only was this an incident, and I am not raising this to be divisive, but I'm just pointing to the hypocrisy of the, 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 the use of can't lie that, that that Holocaust made her stumble a little bit. She was stuck with she. she didn't because wanna... when you the when you bring up the Holocaust and you relate anything to the Jews, Woo, they get it gets scary. <laughs> the hair starts curling up and <laughs> she was yeah. the, 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 she 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 was you know she got through it. She got there, but she definitely was. <laughs> she was know, scared. She said, "I'm not trying to be divisive, but kid, you trying to be divisive." She calling out that bullshit hypocrisy, but bullshit. Hey, yeah. Of reparations or as necessarily. A weapon to 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 shut down black or African Americans asserting what they feel they're rightfully owed. Um, in 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 2013, um, the Biden president, Vice President Biden at the time, um, was responsible for the the disbursement of I think it was 12 million dollars for the victims of the Holocaust. And these things happen, and there's not a poll. Not one poll. Not do. Do you agree with this? Do you believe in reparation for this? Nobody was polled. They, they just give them the money. They just give it to them. And I love the fact that she, every time she talked about it, she would go back to Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden is now the 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 president. Yeah. And he has not talked about reparations. He told Ice Cube to get back to him. And then got back to him. And uh, they still have not discussed anything. There's not a national debate about, you know, I wasn't involved, so I shouldn't have to pay. There's not a debate by, you know, my family didn't benefit from this. The government recognized the harm and made a conscious decision that to repair it, this is what we're going to do. With the Native American Great Protection Act, the government recognized the harm and decided this is what we're going to do to repair what we were responsible for. But the one aggrieved group that this government has yet to have that, you know, it's almost as if they don't even want to have the conversation. She, it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, niggas, every time you talk oh, about it, it's like, God. oh, are we back on this subject again? Yeah, we back on They it. really think that we're going to forget and just it's, not let it go. Ain't going to happen, Jack. That ain't never going to happen. About the generational harm caused by slavery and how the government benefited. This country went from an infant in its infancy to a superpower because of slavery and the government does not want to acknowledge that recognize the harm and take steps to repair it so it's hypocrisy to talk about the fact that we should not consider reparations historically we paid reparations over and over because it was the right thing to do 
why is it that we can't recognize the harm caused by slavery, that we can't move on, that we can't move to that truth and reconciliation because there's never been the truth telling about slavery? There you go. <laughs> because when they get when they give you those reparations and that money, you got to go. You got to go. Right, that's when we're going to jump forward here. That we've heard emphasized here a couple of times already is that reparations is not just about a check. Um, part of the point of repair, at least in my perspective, and I'll throw this to the panel. It's a pretty big damn part. It's probably eighty <laughs> percent. The check is the big part. <laughs> is about recognizing the wrongs of history. How do we get to the point where we can talk about race and the wrongs of history in a way that is respectful and that moves the conversation forward? And just from everyone's perspective here, how important is that part of repair? It seems like that needs to happen first. Um, Tamara, do you want to jump on that first? Sure. And I think I want to go back and say that we do a disservice when we say it's not about simply a check. And I say that only because, you know, you know, if if you know, if what's past this prologue, then the country has already established a precedent for reparations. Every time this country has issued reparations, it started with an apology and a check. It, this woman was killing in this damn life. She was killing. We didn't even got to say nothing. She was killing it. So because we are now asking for reparations, we want to change the narrative or talk about something else. No, let's start with an apology and a check and then continue discussion, the discussion as to how we move forward. Keep in mind that there's no amount of money. She was on it. She's like, she just went going for it. She was sick yeah, of it. We're going to talk about the check. But I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to go ahead and say what she said later. She went on to say that when people talk about reparations for black Americans, they always talk about education, uh, therapy, spiritual uh, reparation. And they go, look, for everybody else, it's money. But for us, we got to we got to take the money away and turn the money into other things. And that's the, and then in the, the, the cop that's going to talk the David. Yeah. He made He was like, he said, what did he say? He said, uh, it will, he said, why don't, well, he said there's white people that, uh, suffer too that are poor. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, why, why not, why not don't make it a racial thing, make it a, 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 poor a thing. group, a, a group thing. And that Rainbow, brings back to Rainbow the thing. Coalition. Why is it when black, when black people ask for something, we got to include. We got to include everybody. It cannot just be for us. Mm -hmm. It has to be inclusive for everybody because everybody wants to benefit off of us. And that's the problem with the progressive movement. Yep. They want to say no, 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 no. All together. We, we can't just give out reparations if we raise the minimum wage everybody will get something but and the, that'll trickle down to black people and help them and help everybody else. All that would do is make everybody get more money. The and same, still leave you where you're at. The at. Bottom. You're still at the bottom. Because if everybody's getting the same thing. You, you just get more at the bottom. There's more at the bottom. That's it. They don't want you to leave. They want you to be the permanent underclass. So also in that situation, the, the uh, Caucasian dude who's against it, he said, I have a theory. What if we do some tax help uh, or credit help? I'm sorry. What if we make it where, because a lot of black Americans pay rent, we can work, we make it where paying rent is actually a plus on your credit. You get a better credit score if you pay your rent on time instead of making it not account for it. And you go, but that benefit everybody. And he also said, he said that white people have problems too. With their credit too. They're With poor. Their and they too. Need... They're poor too. <laughs> so he think, so white people are poor because of slavery too, I guess. Because of slavery, Jim Crow, red line, they, that's their, that's their reason too. No, they poor because they ain't take advantage of their time to rule. If you poor and white in this country, you ain't taking advantage of your time to rule. And then, sorry, it's up now. It's too late. Okay, let me show you. Okay, there was a guy who came in here who got kicked out of the room because he was he starting. Skippy. He was spitting fire. So I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna let y'all hear what he had to say uh, and what got him kicked out. I want to respond to what David said about there being poor white people. You know, Lyndon B. Johnson was a white man. He's the president who helped to usher in the civil rights legislation. And when he launched a war on poverty in the 1960s, he said that he realized something. 
he said that in a poor white person, if you give them someone to look down upon, they won't notice you're picking their pockets. He then said, hell, give them a poor nigga to look down on and they'll empty their pockets for you. The point I am making is that there's definitely an issue with poverty in this country that definitely impacts white Americans. But no white American has poverty forced upon them as the black Americans who are descendants of American slaves. That was done to black Americans. We talk about slavery. Let's be very clear. Reparation goes far, far, far beyond just slavery. Slavery was the beginning of it. But even after slavery, in some aspects, our people experienced even more violence. From nothing, we built Black Wall Street in Oklahoma, South Carolina, Florida. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Kicked him out. Please remember to, to watch the, the language tonight. We want to, as I said what at the language? beginning, keep the conversation respectful. What was that respectful? Um, what did he say? He did not say nigga. Oh, because, he said Negro. No, because he was talking shit. You know, he, white that, people. No, that's the guy. Jam Clan who's running against Jim Claiborne for con Congress. And he was. They were told to cut it. Cut the mic. I, I'm not gonna say they were told to cut shit. the mic. I said they was told to cut the mic. This is him here. <laughs> <laughs> he doing that smile. That <laughs> Uh, smile. Yeah, this is him. I think his name is Marcel. So, you know, he's running for Congress all up down there. I'm going to keep up with him because Jim, Jim Claiborne. That nigga got to go. Or Clyburn. He got to go. He got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he got to go. He got to go. It's, yeah. Listen, let this be the season that the young people get these old ass people that's been in these offices for all these years and ain't doing shit get their asses out do you believe in a term limit hmm? you do believe in the age limit for congress like should, i do it should be a certain age where you're forced to retire it should be a certain what, age what's the you. age you believe i believe you start losing your marbles i say about i say 65 i was gonna say 62 i say the same age you tell people they can retire that's the same time people in congress have to go yeah it's a lot of them that need to go so you get in at 40 and you serve for 20 years and you got to go. Yeah. There's no way in hell you should be able to be in politics for 40, 50 years. Like, what? what are you and talking? all they do is pass the baton. It, like, for instance, Nancy Pelosi, there's, <laughs> like that Truman dude said, the only time people become millionaires as politicians, they're crooks. How the hell you become a politician and make a $100 million? And she losing it too because- 100 million, I'm sorry, your net worth is 100 million. Have you been noticing what she does her- Press conferences later, yeah, yeah, she's, she's just kind of like Joe Biden. She's be clackling. She's all over the place. Hey, uh, she done anyway. I think she's she gone. It's her last term. I don't know why they voted her back in there. AOC gonna take she a had spot. Yeah, to finish the job. Uh, AOC gonna take a yeah, spot. Clearly, AOC was chosen to take her spot. Yeah, that's gonna take a spot. So all the people that <laughs> were fans of that, the Latina. <laughs> but look at this. Speaking of reparations, and not teaching the truth about. The history of this country, you know, critical race theory has been a big deal. Teacher loyalty bill will restrict how U.S. history, especially racism, can be discussed in schools. So they're going, they, so they're completely attacking that critical race theory. Well, they're now they're attacking anything got to do with uh, America not being painted in a certain light. That's too late. I saw a guy. There's a there's a there's a white guy in history. I'm pretty sure you know his name, John Brown. He's a white guy. He was an abolitionist. He was known for creating um trying to basically create slave revolt to get black people out of slavery white dude there was a white guy who said john, john brown was a lunatic and he was a, a traitor to his country and i would never be on his side they're like wait because he killed white slave masters <laughs> and he was defending not supporting this supporting that because it wouldn't have led to any good and you go a dead slave master pretty good <laughs> He go, these people were crazy. But look, uh, just one year after New Hampshire legislators first introduced a bill that banned the teaching of discussing of divisive concepts like systematic racism, another bill will be debated. This legislative uh, session will, will take those restrictions further. The proposed bill is titled The Act Related to Teachers' Loyalty and seeks to ban public school teachers from promoting any theory that depicts the U.S. history or its founding in a negative light. 
including the idea that the country was founded on racism. The bill updates a piece of Cold War era law that bans educators from advocating for communism in schools and adds additional bans in advocating for socialism and Marxism. Now, I know why that second part is there. I'm just saying. But I do find it funny how they're linking America being racist or calling America racist with communism and Marxism. Because I, they're viewing, that's how they're getting that's this That's how they're usurping it? They're that's creating how they a division? So they, they're like, it started with the Black Lives Matter. They, they started yeah. in this generation with the Black Lives Matter. It was before, it was the you know, Civil Panthers, Rights Movement and all that shit. Panthers and all that stuff. So they like, we not finna have that happen again. They are, I told you, they, they do everything, try to get things accomplished with blackness. But the part that I'm looking at is, the other part of this, because we know that part is true, but the fact that they don't even want you to paint the founding in a negative light, now, what does that mean? I can't tell the truth. So can I not talk about the founding fathers who owned That's slaves? When I hear founding, I'm thinking of founding fathers. Mind, founding I can't say fathers. who owned slaves. I can't talk about the un- injustices they did. So what are they going to say? They had servants? This is what happened when you're, once again, falling. when you're falling and you just, you just. It's too late. You're putting band-aids on at this point. You're putting band-aids over gunshot wounds. It's over. The shit they doing now, they should have did 60, 80, No, 70. they should have did this. They sh- There's so much thing they're supposed to have done. In the 1800s, <laughs> they they were able to do so much before they even made it to this point. It's too late. They should have got you out of here. That's what they should have did. They did try to get niggas up out of here, but niggas didn't want to go. Well, niggas. some of them didn't want to go because they was already here. <laughs> it yeah, was here. That too. The real ones. Look at this. Inside AI surveillance takes U.S. prisons by storm. U.S. prisons are installing AI powered uh, surveillance to fight crime. Documents seen by the thumb. Thomas Reuters Foundation show, but critics say that privacy rights are being trampled. Detention facilities install systems to scan cell phone to uh, scan phone calls. Now, I already thought when a person is in prison and they call you, they're already listening in. I thought they already was listening in. Maybe it's only so at, too. maybe it's only at federal prisons, prisons, I guess, or maximum security. I thought they were already listening. Los the Angeles, movies, the movies be fake. No, I thought real <laughs> family members in prison. We got like we had no, we don't know nobody that went to prison. <laughs> no, I mean in the movies they do show that. Oh, they've been listening. They've been listened to, and all this shit is under surveillance and stuff. When the sheriff of Suffolk County, New York, requested seven hundred thousand for the U.S. government to fund uh, for actual artificial intelligence systems uh, to eavesdrop on prison phone conversations, his office called it the key tool to fighting gang-related and violent crimes. I just found this story strange because it's like I already thought they were doing this. Now they want they want AI in the prisons. That's how they start. Cause it ain't it ain't just to listen to no damn phone calls. They're trying to see how easy can we track. They've probably been doing it anyway. But how can we track stuff in a in a small con- congested system in this prison that's overflowed? Let's see if we can how we can use this to keep track with people versus on a busy street in New York. So they're doing an experiment. They're experimenting on them. with the AI system. Now, guess what they're doing to that? In the south. <laughs> in the goddamn south. And who? I wonder who's there. Niggas. Alabama and Georgia. Oh hell, Alabama. Alabama and Georgia. If it's Alabama, then that's the blackest. That's that's where the most black people are at. They've already used it. These are the places that used it. So they 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 started off. They Once started again. in the niggas in prison. <laughs> Why does everything start? Everything. They start with you. They start with you with everything. <laughs> they, they had to make sure it worked first. Now I'm going to show you another thing of them talking about the uh, schools and their des- desire to teach certain stuff in schools. Let me say this. I'm not necessarily a proponent of teaching certain topics in elementary and middle school either. I think if you're just going to teach, you have to teach a certain way because I don't know if a kid can really understand what you're teaching them at the age of eight about the history of this country as far as racism and all that stuff. But high school, yeah. What about you? The earlier, the better. <laughs> that, now, I'm not that? just talking about the schools. I'm talking about the parents. Oh, yeah. That's a whole different thing. I'm talking about schools, though. When do schools have a, 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 a right I would or say necessity middle, to I teach would say, uh, I would say, I would uh, say 13, 8th 14. grade. 13, 14. That's a ninth middle grade. Middle school, 8th grade. You say 12? 13? 12, 13. 13 is when you become, you know, Yeah, teenager. teenager. 
Huh, all right. Let's when the brain start working. Let's see what this guy had to say. start getting hot and bothered. <laughs> uh, it's you perfectly valid to talk about uh, the history. Uh, it's perfectly valid to talk about uh, the history of our country and um, you know what we've gone through in terms of slavery and, and racism. And it, those are legitimate topics to talk about. But uh, saying that our country was founded on uh, the basis of slavery or that we were um, and still are a, uh, a racist country or state, um, I think, is uh, not valid and not truthful. Now, here's like the, a leprechaun. And here's the thing that these <clears throat> these people that say this type of stuff, what they believe. They make the distinction of when was America founded? 1619 or 1776? When did America become America? Now, they would say, well, 1619, they were a colony. They didn't become a country until 1777. So technically, they did not start slavery. See, that's just semantics. See, what they'll say is, when we, when we became our own independent country, we began the process of unraveling all the systematic stuff that the UK and Britain Well, that's not true United because Kingdom you came did. along and implemented Jim Crow. That, I, that's my point. That's why I say this is bullshit. But they'll say, no matter what the individual citizens did, the Constitution said this. Even though we know when the Constitution was written. It wasn't <laughs> niggas, written for black people. It wasn't written for you. At least you couldn't have been because all them niggas, how you got a, a slave and you writing the Constitution saying we all free, all uh, uh, equal. So, but that's the argument they make. When was America... America, 1619 or 14, even in the 1400s, or 1776. <laughs> so that's their debate. That's their argument. That's why they was mad with, what's her name? That woman who wrote that 1619 project? Nicole. Nicole Hannah something. She, that's why they got backlash against it. They said, that's why they made another thing, the 1776 commission. Her father is Jewish. Yeah, which is why it's always weird that those people always end up in certain... The stranger. I always end up in certain racial roles. Another situation with uh, rec uh, reparations. There's a, uh, back in the day, we know during, war after World War II, a lot of the black soldiers were not given their uh, GI. So, you know, it set black people back a lot. That was supposed to help establish a certain level of wealth uh, in their families, but they were denied now they're trying to give it back to them. Which is sad that it takes this long for this to happen, but it take us two or three decades to get four or five decades to get what we supposed to get. <laughs> you dead and gone and your kids be inheriting what you supposed to have gotten. Yeah. I look at it as more than just reparations. To me it's just it's giving them their just due, giving them the rightful benefits that they earned through their service to our country. You know, as the legislation stated, if any of the service members had served 90 days during World War II, then they were um, eligible to receive their GI benefits, both the uh, home loans and assistance in any form of education that, that was the next level up, whether it be college or trade or even master's or master's degree or for the doctorates. But because of uh, institutional racism that was um, that is and still exists in our country today, too many of our black veterans uh, were unable to um, take advantage of these benefits. And one of the biggest highlights uh, to me is the, uh, actually, I guess it's two, redlining, which I, also, which I already mentioned, but the education piece. You know, it wasn't that there weren't enough colleges. It's just that there weren't enough black colleges and there weren't enough white colleges that were willing to accept um, our black veterans. And so, so right there, was he making the point that there were, Historically, black colleges denying them because they were saying they didn't fit the uh, requirements. Or he could have just meant that the, the black colleges were full. No, no, he said that he said not. He said that, <clears throat> he said that not that there wasn't enough colleges. He said that he wouldn't accept them. No, he's saying the white colleges wouldn't accept them. He said both. He said it's not that there wasn't enough colleges. He said there were uh, black. He said there wasn't enough black colleges, and there wasn't enough white colleges that were willing, willing to, to accept. accept them yeah not black the white colleges weren't willing to accept them 
Oh, you see? Okay, he's saying he, he was said separate. It wasn't enough. Black colleges, because you know there is a certain capacity amount of people that can go to a college. So, if, you know, all the black colleges are taking up the space. Then <laughs> I, I, I thought you said a different way. But there's plenty of HBCUs now, and uh, niggas choose not to go there. It is what it is. The game is the game, baby. <clears throat> This is what we're doing now. The 70 year old black man, 72 year old black man has gone 29 days without solid food. He will continue until Biden and Democratic senators end the filibuster and pass voting rights leg- legislation. Joe Madison is risking his life to save our democracy. Nope. Share his story. Demand Democratic senators act now. He's risking his life so these illegals can vote. <laughs> this is that's called a movement which requires a sacrifice. We all have to stand up. Mr. Joe Madison did his part as well. Look, man. If you're going to fast, you're supposed to be fasting and praying for, for the most high. You're not supposed to be fasting for this dumb shit that he's fasting for. you telling me you're... You, think, want, you no, should be fasting wait, wait. for 29 days for fucking reparation. Listen. They are making you think you need to fast to convince them to do what they promised you. Now, regardless if you think the voter rights bill is necessary it's one thing the fact that they promised it to you and they're telling you you need to actually convince us to do it <laughs> you're gonna go 29 days without eating solid foods this is all theater it they're is. gonna end up passing that voter legislation i don't think they will it's not even for black people it's for these illegals i don't think it's for black people i mean i don't think uh they're gonna pass it oh you don't think they're gonna pass it i don't think so Thank that have to be confronted. I, I think people saw through it. Now, this next thing, since we're talking about rations, I saw this right here. I don't know how to feel about it because it's about they mix capitalism or they almost, I can make an argument. Has black love already been commodified? Has it already turned into a, a money making thing? The term black love? I mean, because I mean, I would go back to say, you know, movies like Love what Jones. What do you mean about black love? What do you mean black relationship, black love? Has yeah. Black love. Black relationship. Or what is it for? Black love. Relationships. Okay. Are you asking if they make yeah. any? Uh, yeah, they definitely capitalize off of it. I said, is this new though? No. Because I feel like you can make an argument when you base a movie off the idea of what movie references you use? You think Love Jones was that? Or just a regular love story? Brown Sugar. Love and Basketball. You know, they're just love stories. There's other races of movies that have love stories. I didn't say they didn't. I, I'm just saying. I, I guess your point. I'm just saying. Or do you think those are regular love stories? Nigga, do you what? got a problem with black love? Who said that? I'm joking. But look, let me show y'all this. Look at Nicole Hannah. We have some real problems in the you can tell about this country. Hold on. All right. We have some real problems in this country that are deep and structural that have to be confronted with the truth of who we are. I invite each and every one of you listen to these different voices have the courage to say, hmm, let me see what this wrestling with white supremacy and black love is all about. In this class, we are going to be focusing on these powerful issues together. You will learn. Now you see this? this? This is why we're making a point, how they suck you in. Now they said black love has something to do with critical race, race theory, theory, color, color blindness, blindness, voter race suppression. Race. Well, hold on, hold on. What the fuck does black love have to do with No, no, no. Let's take it intersectionality? No. Redlining affected black love. I agree. Housing black liberation movement. Let me tell you the ones that don't make no sense. Housing segregation. The colorblindness. <laughs> so if it's black Oh, oh, oh we don't understand the point they're making. We don't know what side they're speaking from colorblindness. We don't know if they're saying there's this fake idea of colorblindness 
or if we need to see color. We need to stop pretending. I don't know. Intersexuality? Yeah, I don't understand that one. How slavery and anti-blackness is foundational to nearly every American institution in modern life, even if we refuse to see it. This woman is biracial. You may hear things that you find hard to believe. They are a testament to parts of our history that we've dismissed. The story that you can tell about this country, about it being a land of equality and opportunity, who gave America that? We gave America that. There has been this unbroken history of struggle for liberation for hundreds of years. Black people managed to create beauty in the very process of fighting structural racism. Black love is that thing that makes you believe in American democracy. Wait, 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 wait. This is what I was talking about. Did she just say black love make you believe in American democracy? What the fuck? I don't know what any of this has to do with black love. What the hell is she talking about? This is more like the love for the, the country. of the, this the She compared States. black love to American capitalism, American imperialism, American democracy. There right. you go. Every, blackness is always wrapped in a big rainbow. Even when American democracy hasn't believed in us. One of our jobs is to try to make there be as little racism as possible. A more important job is to see where the racism is and think about ways that we can get past. You know, I would have thought when you talk about black love, you wouldn't spend your time talking about white people. That's the obsession. They're obsessed with white people. If you're talking about black love, there's nothing to talk about with nobody who ain't black. <laughs> like, I don't know why the fuck Hannah Nicole Jones is on he's there. He's still stuck on her. I don't know why the fuck Angela Davis is on there. Hey, okay, but... uh. Why? What, what does it have to do with white people? I don't understand. What you mean? <laughs> For them, it has everything to do with white people. And while they sitting there talking about intersectionality, they want that hug. While they sitting there talking about you know all this other stuff, let me show you what is brewing in this country right now. Let me show you what's brewing in this Not country. Not another blood and soil. see those shields we can get into what that means That's what they doing. War. <laughs> they preparing for a war. See, this is what the Caucasian man understands. He understands what's going on right now. He's trying to convince the last, I would say definitely last decade. Uh, you've been seeing a lot of these white philosophical people come out and try to talk to the young Caucasian male. He's, they look at him and say he's in despair. He's committing suicide. He's, he's for the first time is falling behind white women. He's falling. So the, what the black man been doing, falling behind his woman the Caucasian young male is starting to do it. And they're like, hell no. So they're trying to instill self-confidence through nationalism. If I get you proud of your country, you have no choice but to be proud of yourself. I'll give you something to believe in. That's why they're like calling themselves an American patriot. Exactly. I'm not, see, with our people, what we need to, we're supposed to be doing is looking at a higher power. When you have a higher power you look forward to, understand that you don't know everything and there's something bigger than you. You're able to move forward in life and with a greater sense of purpose. But they don't believe in God. They replace God with America or the most high with their country. And that's really most societies. You can look at most societies. They talk, you can talk about the religion, all this stuff. At the end of the day, it's nationalism. It's country pride. That's why you listen to some of the evangelicals or these Christians. They sound like they call themselves patriots. You're a Christian. You're not supposed to be for the world. You shouldn't give a damn about America if it fall. You should want an America. You should actually. You say want it's America. wicked. You should want, you want it to fall. to fall. But these Christians, they call themselves patriots. They're America first, because that's who the Caucasian. He understands. We got to reinstill this nationalism to our kids. That's why they don't want you at school talking shit about their presidents, talking shit about their former generals, 
talking shit about all these great the people they hold in great because regard. Because their children will begin to say, our parents. I don't care about this country. Our they parents have this. told us lies. Exactly. And that's what's happening. When you don't have self pride, you fall. And they understand they fall, and so they're trying to put it into their, instill it into their sons. They talking. Let me stop. Not their daughters. Their sons. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that again. Not their daughters. Their sons. We you, you, Black people are uh, talking We're about backwards. a black love and a uh, intersexuality and color blindness and all this bullshit. These white people right here, they about action. They're about nationalism. Let me give my sons something to live for, to understand what their purpose, their purpose is. We can't get shit, we can't we can't get shit done because we're not willing to serve the Most High. Exactly. But yeah, you know, <laughs> let's continue to talk about the stuff they've been talking about. You know, they say no the the, the bigger plan. Another sign that this place is falling. You got it. Yep, I got it. Outside of the United Nations, something amazing. I think this happened last month. Maybe it's been out there for like a month or two. Mm. Outside of the United Nations, a statue was given to them, given to them by this is headquarters, US UN headquarters in America. A statue was donated by Mexico. And the name of the statue that they gave it was the Guardian for International Peace and Security. Out of chaos comes. Let me show y'all this picture. Now, what that look like? That looks if like you a, if you we talked about the Most High a second ago. If you read the scriptures, <laughs> that looks like the beast. Go ahead and read. This is uh, Revelations, what is that, 13 and 1? Revelations 13 and 1. This is the King James Version. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise upon the sea, having seven hands and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Bear, bear feet. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion lion mouth and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority <laughs> so who is the beast <laughs> this shit is getting real out here who is the beast they who? had another one too in new york you should have brought that one up too oh the dragon the dragon they actually had the dragon out there and the dragon had what rainbow colors. rainbow colors and if you look at this picture real good i know it was in a darker setting it has rainbow colors on it too. Yeah. So when a beast come in, he's gonna be a flaming. <laughs> oh, another thing crazy that happened, since I'm talking about the Caucasian male, and the Caucasian male in general feeling like he's losing society. Look at this. Men sought to kill student school students in name of Cal Rittenhouse. Mm. A deranged Missouri man threatened to kill students at a high school in the name of Cal Rittenhouse. Mitchell Lovelace, 27, posted on Snapchat Saturday that he planned to shoot up a Festus High School in honor uh, of the uh, uh, Illinois team, according to the char- charging document. Rittenhouse, 18, was acquitted. We know Lovelace, uh, who was first, or, uh, who was later arrested for the uh, Festus home, has been charged with making a terrorist threat. I'm going to shoot Festus High School students in the name of Kyle Rittenhouse. Another post by Lovelace warned that no wonder schools get shot. The news just proved we can get away with it, especially if it's in like Festus charging uh, documents read. Now, when I read it, I didn't know if he was saying I'm going to do it because y'all let Kyle Rittenhouse get away with it. Or if he said I'm going to do it in honor of Kyle Rittenhouse because I think he's. I don't know. And then there was another thing that just happened. This came out today where a boy was caught up in 19 years old who was about to go. And shoot up a school who said he wanted, yeah, said he wanted to copy the Columbine shooting. And have y'all know, since that Columbine shooting, by the way, those two kids were Satanists. <laughs> I ain't gonna say tiny hats. We'll say that just say that they were tiny hat Satanists. Feeling they rich. And allegedly they were homosexuals. Allegedly. And they went around shooting up people in school. Since that moment, this has become a normal thing now. It's a it's a uh it's a ritual. At least once a year there's a mass shooting. I wouldn't say once a year since the Columbine thing, but I would say in the past 10 years, you have between two to three a year of mass shootings. 
It's crazy. Whether it be a, a high school, whether it be a college, whether it be a, a concert, it's always something. Yeah. Speaking of a possible... Speaking of a possible ritual, I'm not yeah. putting no accusations out there. Oh, Lord. Nick, Mr. Nick Cannon. So. Hold on. Made a mistake. Let's go here first. <laughs> I mean, Nick Cannon, infant son Zen, has died after battling brain tumor. Mm. Over the weekend, I lost my youngest son to a condition called, you see it? Hydrophilatus. <laughs> that was pretty much a uh, malignant uh, midline brain tumor, brain cancer. So it's an unfortunate situation. It's like certain people, they kind of stay in the news. And it's always like twice a year, something happens where they. <laughs> negative or positive. Negative or positive. And Nick Ken is one of those people where every so often he just pops up. Something happens, tragic or positive. Or he just transferred no reason. Because he's into that shit deep. Now, I'm not going to make it out any. I, I was surprised by how many people immediately jump the term sacrifice. Yep. He, his son did. As you can see by the picture. He's in the all red. Oh, yeah. He's in the, uh, she's got on the pink. The baby's in the blue. Listen. When I first saw this, I'm not going to lie. I said, this is a sacrifice. I still be do believe it's a sacrifice. I do believe that the baby did have a, a brain tumor. We've noticed that Nick Cannon just been going around getting all these biracial women pregnant for the past. Uh, started with Ryan Carey. He had twins by her. Then he went on so and so on so forth to have other children. The rumor is that he's having all these kids so that he could uh, get whatever body part he needs to you know keep his health that's a ledge i don't know if it's true i just you know i think it's kind of weird for a celebrity to just be right out openly having multiple kids that, with all these how's that people. weird we know people who are not celebrities that do that we know people who's not celebrities that do that but it's it's intentional for him yeah people want to have kids no I, I don't think we've seen this before it's i not don't new. think niggas intentionally get women pregnant and if you get women hood. pregnant you did it intentionally so you think you say I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna put a baby in you type yeah. of situation? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For Nick Cannon's reasons why he's doing it, I think it's different. He said he's doing it because he want to leave a legacy and stuff, didn't he? I don't know if he said that or not. How old is he? Nick Cannon's forty one. So it would make sense to have all the kids he can now, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what's the? But why all of a sudden now? Is, oh, because I, I live my twenties and now okay. I'm all, in my thirties. I started having my children. That's okay. how I usually go. Okay. Well, we can live in a world that you oh, live in, no. or we can live in a world that we know that exists. That's a reality. What I just they said, uh, they carry out these acts. Time will tell. <sighs> uh, I guess uh, unfortunate for him. It's very unfortunate for him, and, and I agree. Family. You don't get to tell this man how he should. Uh, grieve. Yeah, you got some backlash for coming to work. Um, I would, well, people would definitely say, "Well, did you sacrifice your mom because?" You know, my mom died on, you know, the kitchen floor. and uh, That's pretty descriptive. You have that's to, pretty descriptive. You didn't have to say all that. I didn't have to say all that. But what I'm just going to say is I ended up going to work maybe an hour, two hours later. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the cracker that I worked underneath did not have any sympathy for me. Uh, but I, I think sometimes... You need to take your mind off of things. Well, you had to compartmentalize. Yeah. And um, so th for some people, it worked. For other pe people, grieve differently. Yeah. Just some people would. Some people would have not win. But uh, at Nick all. definitely is wicked as hell, and uh, <laughs> I do think it was a, it was a sacrifice. Okay. So, all right. Houston law firm seeks ten billion in Astroworld Speaking lawsuit. Speaking of another, representing fifteen hundred concert goers. The number don't keep going up. First it was a hundred million, then it was a billion. Now it's ten billion. Who's gonna pay this ten billion? Well, anybody involved. Oh, is Hulu involved with this? Great. They try. They, people accused them of trying to release a uh, documentary, but it wasn't a documentary. They said they said it was actually just a report they were re-releasing. 
but people thought they were doing a documentary on it, and they was, they took it down. But what if it wasn't a documentary, it was just a report? Where you should have just let it, it go. They said that's what I'm saying. They said they didn't want any controversy, so they just took it down. Then no, you would have just came out and said we're releasing it. It's not a documentary; it's a, it's a report. I don't know. Houston law firm is demanding ten billion for the restitu- uh, resolution for more than fifteen hundred cases. It was filed on behalf of the victims of Astroworld Festival tragedy at Energy Park in Houston on November fifth. That resulted in ten people dead, not, only ten still, and hundreds uh, of injured. Attorney Brett Coon, founder of Brett Coon, <laughs> of Associates, announced the massive lawsuit Monday Lord, against the rapper and headliner right. Travis Scott and other defendants. Now, what's funny is there's a certain person is able to duck this. Drake just went on stage with Kanye West where they did a pseudo versus where Kanye washed them. Drake didn't realize he was coming with his hits and you know it was a it was a it was a bad mode for him. But he was there. I'm pretty sure Travis Scott like, yo, Drake was there. Why is he allowed to just move around the situation? The shillings, man. The shillings. Drake able to just act like he wasn't there. Drake's happened. mother is Jewish. <laughs> Drake and you know the Jews, they they go through the mother. They said if your mother is Jewish, then you're Jewish. Yeah, that's what they say. So Drake is, yeah, he got, you know, we seen Drake with his tiny hat on. He don't, you know, let that hair grow because he'll have those stringy curls too that they have. What did that uh, rapper say? His hair won't nap up? Oh, yeah, your hair won't, won't let it grow. won't let it grow out. <laughs> yeah. He had a tiny little curl going on. Right, let's see what Cheska had to say. The Charlemagne interview. By the way, his first interview with Charlemagne, the guy. The wicked ass devil. And you go... I guess it makes sense on some level seeing how Charlamagne the guy has been placed as a person at the forefront of a uh, hip hop quote unquote black culture. But it is kind of, you just kind of go, of course. Don't they bring like a dark energy? Those two, a dark presence on screen. Yeah. They you know, we it. know that the, the, the families of the people who passed are definitely watching this right now. And you know, there's nothing you could say to heal the trauma these families who lost loved ones are, 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 you know, are going through. But being that you know they're watching, what would you, what would you say to them directly? I'll say to them that I'm, I'm always here, and that you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in this with you guys, and I love you, you know, and I'll always, you know, be there to help you guys heal through this. And I understand that they're going through, you know, they're grieving right now and they're finding understanding right now. And, you know, it's not just like a right now thing, it's a for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and these people that came to the show, they are my family. And I've always had that connection to the people I feel like that listen to the music or came to my shows. And that's why I really, you know, it's really hard on me even just, you know, to even like, you know, and even, He's trying to get that tear out. Cause you know, they end up, they, they, they lost, they, they lost their loved ones, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it, you know, it's, it's tough. Um, and you know, I just want to always just be there for them and just always just be able to just know that I'm a fix this for the future people, you know, and, and fix this solution. Nigga, what? you talking your next concert already? She. <laughs> this nigga, yeah, I, I hope y'all caught that. Or... He, he said, he said, I'm gonna make sure there's a solution for the next people. So, next, I'm, I'm already thinking about my next concert. I, I'm, I'm not gonna sacrifice as many people next time because it yeah. just got a little too much out of the hand. The mug, the mug had a damn thing where you walk into the concert, meet you on the other side. See you on the other side. And you go, y'all went to this place. <laughs> The see second you see that, side, Nick, what's the other side of the, the other side of the concert? As soon as you side? see that, you should have been like, "Nah, I'm good tonight." I mean, well, no, you got to go through that nigga mouth to get into <laughs> mouth, into the mouth <laughs> to get to the inside of the concert. No, I'm good. Yeah, we did a whole video on that. You can go check that out. Um, and fix this problem. I mean, you know, um, and find a solution to making sure that this doesn't happen in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and definitely be a number one voice for this. You know. All right, we know. We, yeah. That was terrible. He yeah. didn't have no emotional. I will say, I don't. I don't people. think he had much training either. It was just a. I guess that's more admirable. 
he didn't get any training. He just kind of went up there dry turkey his thing. Or oh, if that was training, then good lord. That was training. <laughs> good lord. That's the best they can do with his ass. He is completely detached from reality. He don't got no soul. Yeah. Now, speaking of souls, this, we've transitioned so well in this now. <laughs> Segways are really good. Speaking of selling selling souls or saving souls, Joe Osteen caught hiding money in church bathroom. <laughs> After reporting 600k had been stolen, now that's, that's why he didn't want those people in that damn church when that damn <laughs> was, hurricane came through there. stashing money because he was afraid that some negro was gonna go in there taking a, a leak <laughs> and was gonna accidentally tap a brick and that and shit was gonna, gonna fall and, and that money would have definitely got took and he wasn't gonna say a, shit to the media. We're gonna tell us so, but the 600k went missing I think in 2014, 2015. I don't know why it's being referenced now. This is seven years later. I don't know why you're bringing that 600K from 2014. Because what is Mr. Osteen told the dude that he didn't want to do that they put, you know, they the telling said, the truth on him? The dude said that when he opened it, uh, he went into the bathroom stall. Plumbing. And he was loose. And he, the plumbing. He was doing the plumbing. And 500 envelopes of, of money, money and checks fell out. But in the full report, there were 3,000 envelopes and checks. So there was some missing? I said that if you do the math, that probably was a couple million dollars in that wall. There was, there, when we talked about this, that reminded me of the show Orzark, where uh, they were stashing money in the walls. Uh, I think it was in the restaurant. or what, No, it was in the house, in the basement. They were stashing money in the yeah. walls. It's just so funny how these stories imitate real life. It's yeah. almost like they, they <laughs> tell you inside shit. Then they do it. And then they... They reveal They reveal it. Yeah. I'm not the type of person to tell you what they should believe in. Religion is a personal choice and you should allow people to believe and worship who they want, whoever they want. That being with that being said, if a preacher is named Creflo Dollar drives a Lambo and in the Instagram plays like a rapper IG model or is caught taking his side chick to Cancun, you might want to find another church. Joe Osteen has been scamming for years. This isn't anything new, but the latest story is wild. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. Why well, um, you know I mean, you have to ask yourself. Is that his government name, Cleflo Dollars? We don't bring it to the. That's not. He said it's his real name. That's, the, that's my that, name. Did, did that Negro name himself Cleflo Dollars? That sounds like somebody that used to slang on the streets out there in the hood. Uh, and he came. A lot of them do turn to preachers. Yeah, became a preacher said, and still had that same mentality Creflo as Dollar. the pre as as the as the hustler on the streets. And they, that's wicked as hell. They give him the money. He also made his congregation give him a damn. Uh, no, no, no. That was uh, that wasn't him, was it? That was somebody. Yes, else. that was Cleflo Dolls. The yes, ones for that a G5 wanted G five jet or G four or something. The like jet that. that was Cleflo. He won a fifty, yeah, fifty million dollar jet. That wasn't the one that died from quote unquote uh, cancer. Cancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that bug. That as I die slow. <laughs> Plumber who found stash of cash at Joe Osteen Mega Church demands reward. Oh, it's too late, baby. Why would you <laughs> look? I get want to be an honest person, and I guess it's a church, so you feel obligated to be an honest person. But my, but bruh, no, that church, come on, uh, Mr. Joel Osteen, wicked. What as what hell? what happens if you keep the money? That's what because oh, he I don't know he, he, he he's not supposed to know what's in there. So you take the money, and he comes out and say, "Your company stole money from me." You go, "Well, Somebody, I ain't stealing no money." He took that money. Somebody getting packed up. Now, the theory is, obviously, the first theory is Joe Osteen stashing money. I don't know why he would stash money in his church. He probably got other accounts he can just throw it into. Okay. Other people are saying that this is being used to sabotage him. Somebody is stealing money out of the books. it can go into what you said. They laundering money for the cartel. That's what happened. Which is what they were doing at Arzark. They were laundering money for the cartel. My theory is he's laundering money. This is, a, this is based in Texas. I believe he's laundering money. May not be for a cartel. I don't allegedly. know. Allegedly. I don't know. But money was being uh, laundered. I believe. Allegedly. I don't believe nobody's stealing from the church. I believe he's laundering money for peace, somebody. But yeah, that's just my theory on the situation. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got next. Uh, you don't want to do this. I don't think I want to do this now. You want to do it? All right, listen to me, last story. We're going to speak a little bit on DJ Academics and his run in with that Fresh and Fit podcast. 
he's clearly helping them get views because they views is in the damn. We can't talk about views. No, we can't talk about views. <laughs> Let me. Yes, we can not talk about views because they were at a like they were pulling in four hundred, five hundred k. They still are, ain't they? No, they down ninety six k. Yeah, a hundred k. What's yeah. that? What's them dudes named Alba and Preach? They really Alba put a dent in it. Yeah, they. They numbers went up. They numbers did go up. But yeah, let me go ahead and show what happened on there. Oh, you you have have hold, hold on, hold on. Let me let me keep it before we get into this. Let let me keep it all the way one hundred. If we really <laughs> wanted to get numbers, we could do like those. Uh, what's those twins' name? Hodge twin. The Hodge twin. We live in the state of Washington. The Republicans in here hate Governor Easley. <laughs> there, there is a there is a sector of conservatives here, in uh, I would say Eastern, no Western Washington. If we took this channel and became right wing and talked shit about fucking uh Biden and all this shit, we already didn't talk, talk about they no, 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 but didn't talk about race and talk shit about them. <laughs> but we still could talk shit about Mexicans and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. We get views. I don't think it's our audience, man. No, it's not our audience, but it could become our audience because we chose to make it our audience. <laughs> Travis trying to switch over. But I'm trying to stay right. Travis trying to switch over. If we was trying to get a bag, we could get a bag. <laughs> I see it. So yeah. talk about yours. Yeah. Yeah. Obesity. Dunder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blue inning. Blue inning, yeah. baby. And now, let me go ahead and say the reason why she's already... She's already... <laughs> that Wait too. a minute. What's up with Hold the teeth? <laughs> 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 I'll pause Oh snap! All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa! The teeth. <laughs> His teeth don't look like that. It's just why I paused it. No, they look like that. <laughs> they, don't, they, no, no, no. The camera. No, no, I'm serious. They don't. Uh, His teeth don't look like no, that. No, <laughs> they production. That ain't the camera. That ain't a certain view. The teeth is stacked. <laughs> no, I paused it at a spot. It okay. Crazy. <laughs> be, 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 like he got no teeth in the front. <laughs> he snagged a tooth. <laughs> No, but, he got more of the teeth than he need in the front. That's what it looks like. But it's like he has no teeth in the top right there. Damn. But, you're uh, right. It do kind of look but it's, like it's, that. It's, it's the camera. It's, I paused it where I paused it. But look. So he got teeth growing on the top of his gums? I don't know. But look. Man, DJ Academy what, snatched the shit out of his mouth. The, uh, the reason why they started arguing is because she made a comment that she want to leave. He said something. They said he said something about her kid or she made a, he made a slick comment. So she got on 10 and now she on his ass. <laughs> but when you look at how she this show is they put themselves in danger they've set a precedent that you can come on my show act the fool act the fool and go viral i might kick you out quote unquote but you can go viral i don't think they understand that it's gonna keep growing and growing and the next girl go up the next girl i think if this is not scripted the, no the the part i think is quote unquote scripted is the girls know they're going there and that there's a possibility they're gonna kind of force the argument like it, the energy is there. We're drinking. If you want to argue, argue. You can get loud. You can get uncontrollable. And we're just going to put you out and we're going to go viral. See, that's the problem is that sometimes people, they genuinely, uh, genuinely try to start a channel and then they start getting the views. And then they got to capitulate to the view viewers. And now so they just got to be animated do. and be fake and do all this stuff to try to keep views and keep people entertained. Yeah. Man, just let it go. Your real audience will support you. They'll watch, if enjoy what you're doing. If you got to do all these semantics and antics to keep people to view your channel, then it's just not worth it. It becomes tiring and draining yeah, if you, you have to do another trick. Is you got to do a new trick every week. Yeah, I'll be seeing people with 10 million subscribers, and they be like, I'm retiring from YouTube. And you go, they just sound Because they're they tired. It's like, hey, man, do what you got to do for your own mental health. But damn. Yeah. Or some people say I'm going on a break for uh, a couple months and they come back. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. Considering most those type of people treat YouTube like a complete job, like this is what they do. They're content creators. Like the prank, the prank channels. Are, that's easy money. No, but don't you run out of pranks to do? No, you start doing fake pranks, hiring people to act stuff out. <laughs> yo, yo, too yo. much of that. Yo, yo, yo. yo chill, 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 chill. Little Johnny can't miss school tomorrow. <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> 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 I love kids. 
I love the kids. He's gonna make it to school. <laughs> Where? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Are you, you trying to stay? We could rock. I will. Hey, it's whatever. You the one no, that said you had a baby. Baby, you said something about me having a baby out of wedlock. I said something about you sending and having gluten and obesity stuff. Now we on the same oh, page. No, no, shit. Oh, no, I like this. <laughs> So we're on the same page. We're on the same page. Oh, you need your bitch tonight? Gluttony. No, no. Gluttony. Hey, hey, hold on. This bitch right here? Yeah, yeah. Yo, hold on. This way, y'all just started started zooming on me. Hold on. This is even more come out. Yeah. Wait till the door. Follow me. I'm really not mean, y'all. Hold on. Cut that out. Cut that out. All right. No, no, this is amazing. So so, so here's the big difference, and I'm glad you're here now. You know what I mean? What's the big difference? Well, I, I didn't leave with saying that I'm over here. I'm a child of God and following the Lord. I That's didn't leave with that you, either. You said, how would I want a man sure, to approach you me? You said you was talking about I you're a child of God. I want a man that, that you, fears God. Then we showed God. your Instagram, you on that fears shit. God. Hey, uh, Maybe uh, then you want fashion. Guys, so what did you, you talk about? Guys, you want to make our time, please? Oh, Thank shit. you. Shit. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait, let's do it. Oh, I like it. Yes. Do you say one more? No, so as you I said, asked hold me on, what on. kind of man do I like and how should he approach me? I said, definitely not online. I said, if you're in person, you come to me directly, you speak to me clearly, you don't yell from across the room. The first but time I heard being a child of God, I heard about you. See, you always cutting the women off, but you never let us finish, but you want us to let you finish. And I don't like the way you told all these ladies to shut the fuck up earlier. That was rude as fuck. Oh, shit. Check yourself on that oh. shit. The this show is just chaos. It's not my cup of tea. And it's a question you got to ask yeah. yourself. Is this a, is this the reality that's being put on the internet, or are they doing this for the internet? They're doing this for the internet. Because I keep saying when you create an environment where people can be just volatile, it can go really, really left one time. Unless, like you say, it's completely scripted. Who's going to be the asshole is already picked out. We already know that <laughs> allegedly they were called out for allegedly these women in order to be on the show. They have to be willing to have sex with the host. <laughs> Damn. That's pathetic. Hey, this helps build that means the, the girls can't... use it to build their platform. Yeah, but that means you can't pull them on your own. You gotta Well, they call themselves alpha males. <laughs> if that if you're alpha male, then you should be able to pull one without uh basically they're they they're putting in the contract that you know you have to be willing to like this one. is what they do in Hollywood. That's the same thing. This is allegedly. This, this is the. But uh, what I'm saying is, if you are alpha male and you have the swag, you should be able to pull these women without putting into a contract. Well, I guess they look at it in very up and down terms. You want to be on the show? You got to do this. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! No, uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. I don't know who you're. It's not back to what happened. I don't know who you're. What happened? Right. So, so you, you are like, like, right, right, shut the fuck up. And what? everybody shut the fuck up too. Because y'all didn't even move. Oh, like, no. what? Okay. like, nigga, y'all was scared or right. something. Like, Here's nigga, I'm sorry, Lassie. Does he want to say I had our... a child out of fornication because I want to get home from my baby and, 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 and to said, get my baby up at a, at a decent hour? You can go home and change the diaper. We, you feel <laughs> cool. No, he and we said my diapers. Go. go ahead, drink you some more calories. And, okay, so oh, here, no, 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 we're, we're gonna address no, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Myron, don't don't freak. And this is when the the room turned against her. The women turned against her. And this right here, kind of the point. We done watching this point. This is where I thought DJ Academic should have just shut up. The women in the room don't turn against her now. Now, the security guards should come over. Hey, time to go. She stand up and go. Academic's wanted to one up her <laughs> because she would hit him with them fat jokes. <laughs> well, his ass, is, his ass is fat. She would hit him with them fat jokes, so he wanted to really cut. I mean, through. I don't understand. You wealthy enough to hire yourself a a, a, a trainer. Hire your trainer and get your body in shape. Maybe this is his branding, being the fat DJ. Well, <laughs> clearly, well, you're going to be get roasted about being the fat DJ. I just think, I do say the internet was already against, I don't think he was wrong in the situation. He was dealing with a, that woman, like, come on, we see her. But people was, <laughs> like, they was on his, they can stand. I don't, I don't know how people watch that type of content. It's not, well, uh, it's people, not entertaining for me. When people like different things, so. It, it kills your brain cells. <laughs> people like different things. But people kept bringing up the thing where uh, he got checked by uh, Vic Mince, Vince Mensa. How you say his name? Vic Mensa. Who turned, now he wearing dresses and stuff. So. Oh, like Kid Cutting? Yeah, it's like you got checked by a dude who wearing dresses now. But you, oh, Cupid, sorry. Kid Cupid. Yeah, you'll go in, you'll yell at this girl. But, you know, you'll let some dude check you <laughs> who wearing dresses now. It is what it is. I don't disagree with it. I do think that the re that whole situation though it creates a certain uh 
culture on your page on your channel and it can and that's the, that's that is a new culture and that is a standard for the channel not not read. just them though i'm not it's not just them oh. it's like any channel where it's men and women on a panel it has to be that now but particularly for fresh and fit every time they do a, a show or a podcast it has to one up the last one the last one so they have if they, it's gonna become exhausting. If they just have a regular podcast where they have a discussion, it's they ain't gonna, gonna be like, get no views. Well, they get views. They'll get views, but it's not gonna be as uh, it's not gonna be a highly rated episode or show as it was well, prior to the one that was chaos. Well, every show can't be number one, so you're gonna have yeah. you know it's it chaos. Is, I can't stand chaos. <laughs> anyway, man, uh, I guess that's gonna end of that. We lasted about the, the average time now, a little extended. Yeah, but. We do have a uh, preview to something we have coming up. Uh, let me just get it ready. And this is going to be a new series we have on the page. Yep. Hold on. Let me. All right. Let me just do this. <clears throat> So this is going to be our new intro for another series we're going to be doing. Uh, let me go ahead and hit it. And that's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing breakdowns of movies. I know we said we're going to do this like what, two months ago, a month ago? Two, three, four months ago. We finally got around. We're going to be doing it. We'll try the to. Shows are not going anywhere on Saturdays. It's yeah. still going to be shows on Saturdays. We're going to try and have the first episode up by Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. Whatever day it comes out, that's going to be the permanent date. We're going to try to have them released. Finally getting the second <laughs> the second series off the ground. <laughs> now yeah. we just got to get the other five. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, that's going to be our new thing we're going to be doing. And we're going to be renaming the channel. Yeah, you see, we're going to be naming the channel something else. From so, Lost in Seattle. So if you see something new in your recommendations, it's us. don't unsubscribe. <laughs> it's us. So what happened to Lost in Seattle? What, what is this? What is it? Yeah. Deeper than that what? <laughs> Deeper than the what? Yeah, that's that's us. That's all going to be our new thing. Yo. But anyway, man, I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Uh, you got anything else you want to say? Uh, We appreciate the support. Um... We do this because we really enjoy doing this. Uh, it's, it's not about numbers for us. It's something that we're passionate about and that we, we enjoy doing. passionate. Going. It's like a hobby. It's like... When Nigga, you this is becoming a passion. <laughs> it's coming stressful. Shit. Damn YouTube. And <laughs> you, you have to... Listen, in order to tolerate the things that... We tolerate. YouTube... And sh the things that YouTube puts you through... It may start off as a hobby, but if you continue to do it, it grows into a passion because you want to beat in order them. to endure the you gotta, things you, you want to beat them. You're like, I'm going to beat what y'all doing. When you win cases, you suffer. <laughs> you can ask any. You get over. You, yeah, they say, yeah, you won this one. Yeah. You won the battle, but you ain't won the war. <laughs> but yeah, man, I hope you all enjoyed the show. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And uh, y'all be safe, man. All praise to the most high and peace. Thank you.